Ahmad wa usalli ala Rasul al-Kareem, inshallah, inshallah bi idhnillah. Today, we're going to start with the third juz. Now, the second juz ended with the battle of Badr. That was the battle of Badr for Bani Israel. One thing that I want to share with you is that Surah Al-Imran, which is the twin surah of Surah Al-Baqarah, is it, most of it is revealed after Uhud, and most of Baqarah is revealed before Badr. Okay? And uh, over here, uh, what is important is that this topic of jihad fi sabirillah is continuing here, but over here you'll find infaq being stressed, which is spend in the cause of Allah, 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 and you'll see how much importance this has. <coughs> in fact, so much importance that you'll see ayatul kursi, which most of you are familiar with, all the preceding ayahs before ayatul kursi and all the ayahs after ayatul kursi are all about spending in the cause of Allah. Why? Because, you know, that is the one thing that everyone can participate in, to spend in the cause of Allah. And over here, one thing that's very important is to make a distinction between spending in the cause, cause of Muslims and spending in the cause of Islam. Spending in the cause of Islam is something else. Spending in the cause of Muslims is something else. Spending in the cause of Islam means to make Islam strong, to make Islam supreme, make the word of Allah supreme. It's not to uh, necessarily help Muslims always when they are in trouble. Because persecution is part of the packet deal. But no matter, you know, Bilal didn't become rich, right? Bilal was poor to begin with. He was poor, you know, except later on at the time of Umar bin Khattab and later on after that. Bilal did go to Syria and had more wealth because of the uh, of, of his position, his status within Islam, and particularly the way Umar bin Khattab looked at it. But generally, no one entered into Islam, so my status as a Muslim will change. You know, a Muslim is fired because of his from his job because he's Muslim. That's that's all fine. That's good good work too. But here, when Quran is talking about spending in the cause of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about spending to make Allah's deen supreme. And this is primarily what the Prophet sallallahu did. And to bring justice to society. And to bring Islam and peace to society. In the, it, and so this is what is very important to know. The, this just starts by talking about the invitation of the prophets. There were different types of prophets. They have different fadilas. But they were all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And while we make no distinction between them, right? But they have uh, different ranks. And then many other important topics are going to be touched. But the one that we're going to look at right now, uh, if I can show you very quickly, okay, is going to be the topic of uh, the prophets of Allah, iman or rejection. And number two, uh, spending in the cause of Allah. And then prohibition of riba. And then after that, business transaction. Now, this ends with the ayats that were revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu in Miraj. So there are some ayahs that are revealed at other times besides the majority of the surah. And the same thing goes with Sutil Al-Imran. We'll touch upon that when those parts, inshallah, come before us. Okay, so let us, inshallah ta'ala, bi uh, azim get started, inshallah ta'ala. <coughs> بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم تلك الرسل فضلنا بعضهم على بعض. These are the messengers of Allah. فضلنا بعضهم على بعض. We have given fadila some of them over the others. ومنهم من كلم الله. Amongst them there was those who talked to Allah. Meaning Musa عليه الصلاة والسلام. He's he's كلم الله. He's the one who talked to Allah. ورفع بعضهم درجات. And others we have raised in rank. وآتينا عيسى بن مريم البينات وأيدناه بروح القدس. And you know, there was no prophet that did miracles like Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. Everything from his birth to his leaving this dunya and then coming back is a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And وَآتَيْنَا عِيسَى بْنَ مَرْيَمَ الْبَيِّنَاتِ And we gave Isa alayhi salatu wasalam the clear signs to proof that he is a prophet of Allah. وَأَيَّدَنَاهُ بِرُوحِ الْقُدُسِ And he was strengthened with the angel, angel Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam. وَلَوْ And over here, why is he mentioned? Why is Ruhul Qudus mentioned? Because it is Ruhul Qudus. Same way the Prophet ﷺ, Jibreel took the Prophet to the heavens. So he was, he was helped by Jibreel ﷺ also to go to the heavens. And when he comes back, 
Isa alayhi salatu wasalam will be helped with Jibra'il because Allah, uh, uh, because uh, Jibra'il is there to help Isa alayhi salatu wasalam specifically. And you know, the ahadith about Isa alayhi salatu wasalam coming back uh, show that when he will come back, there will be angels with him again. Who are Who is in charge of all these angels? Who is the Amir of all the angels? Who is the, you know, the in charge is Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam. So this is all by his doing, you can say. لَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ مَقْتَطَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ If Allah had will, they wouldn't have argued with each other and fought with each other, okay? مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَتْهُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتِ After the clear signs came to them, when the messengers came, the clear signs came. You know, this is not a situation where a messenger comes and the TV is uh, giving you wrong information or disinformation. No, when a prophet comes, a prophet's job is to clarify the message and no one is left because of misinformation, because of stereotypes, because of biases, it's very, very clear what the message is, and there is no ambiguity in that when the prophet, because otherwise Allah would not destroy nations, right? Allah wouldn't destroy the nation of Nuh if it wasn't clear. Allah wouldn't destroy the people of Ad or the people of Fir'aun if it wasn't clear. It became clear, they made a choice. So, وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ مَقْتَطَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَادْهُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتِ After the clear signs came to them, only then they argued with one another and one another and fought with one another. One another. وَلَكِنْ اِخْتَلَفُوا But they differed. فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ آمَنَ Amongst them there were those who believed. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ كَفَرْ And those that rejected. وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ مَقْتَطَلُوا And if Allah had willed, they wouldn't have fought one another. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهُ يَفْعَلُ مَا يُرِيدُ But this is part of Allah's plan. Okay? يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِي يَوْمٌ لَا بَيْءٌ فِيهِ وَلَا خُلَّةٌ وَلَا شَفَعَةٌ وَالْكَافِرُونَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ Oh you people who believe, spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before أَنْفَقُوا أَنْفَقُوا Spend, spend, spend again. مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ Before uh, of what we have bestowed you, of the risk we've given you. مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِي يَوْمٌ لَا بَيْءٌ Before that day where there's no bargaining. وَلَا خُلَّ Nor there's any friendship. وَلَا شَفَعَ Nor any intercession. وَالْكَافِرُونَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ Then after this is this very, the greatest ayah of the Qur'an. What is the purpose of this ayah? The main theme, this is called Ayatul Kursi. The main theme is, there are those that are trying to sit in the chair of Allah. There are those that are trying to sit in the chair of Allah. There are those that are trying to play God. And they want to, you know, do things their way. They take paper and put ink on it, call it money, instead of what Allah has really made money, like gold and silver and these things that have intrinsic value in them. And they want to do things their way and they want to play God, right? And so here Allah is saying, look, I am the God, this is my chair, and those that believe in me, there's no forcing you, but those that believe in me will, will reject the false gods, will reject those people that tried to sit in the chair of Allah. And they will work, they will reject them and they will believe in me. Okay. An example of this is the Kaaba and the idols around the Kaaba. Now they believed in Allah, but they also believed in the idols. Our situation today is, we say we believe in Allah, but we also believe in all the rules that go against Allah's wills. This is just this is just as much shirk according to the Quran, and that will be be clear when Sultan Maida comes. Anyway, Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayyul qayyum. There is no divine, no authority, no power, and nothing truly that is worth being loved except al hayyul qayyum, the one who is all living and the one who sustains everything. Al qayyum, la ta'hudhu sinatu wa la nom, nor does uh, uh, sleep overtake him, nor any sinna, any fatigue takes over him. And what? لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ And for him is whatever is in the heavens and the earth. He is the king of the heavens and the earth. If only a human actually thinks about that for a second. مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَشْفَعُ إِنْدَهُ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ Who dares to stand before him and intercede? No, none. إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ Except by his permission. يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ He knows what's before them and what's behind them. وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ And they don't, in, they don't in, encompass or have any knowledge. بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا بِمَا شَاءٍ They don't have any knowledge except what Allah has chosen for them to have. 
Now what? Now everything is his. He's the one sustaining the universe. He's the one who knows everything. So what? Look, the authority of Allah, the chair of Allah, is it belongs to Allah. And it extends the heavens and the earth. And again, the the same as the al uh, al Qayyum also explained in this part. Wala yauduhu, he doesn't get tired. Hifduhuma by taking care of the heavens and the earth. Wahuwa al aliyul azim, he is most high, most significant. Azim means great. In the you know al ali al ali is the is the rank how high he is. Azim. So there can be like a CEO of a company, is very important person. But another person that's not a CEO could be more important than the CEO. Even though the rank of the CEO is most, is, is most high. But another person in the company, let's say the treasurer of the company, this, uh, the uh, COF, let's say, right? Uh, or the COO, he is maybe more important, in, right? So Allah is most high in rank and he's most important, both. And and this is what we say, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la, Subhana Rabbi al -Azim. Perfect is the Al-A'la, the most high in rank, Subhana Rabbi al -Azim, the one who is most important. Why? Because when we do Ruku, the heart is on the bottom and the brain is on top. So the heart needs to understand what? That Allah is the most significant, the most significant, the most significant. When you're in sujood, you're lowering yourself, so you say Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Now, over here, uh, there, this is going to now be further explained. So, Ayatul Kursi is now being explained by the next, I think, three or four, four verses or five verses, we'll see. And then after that, again, spend, 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 until the ayat of riba come. La ikrah fid deen, there's no compulsion in deen. The authority belongs to him, and no one should play God. And you can choose any religion you want, but no one's going to be forced. Qad tabayyana rushdu min al-ghay, look, the clear path is clear from the false the false path qad tabayyana rushdu min al-ghay fa man yakfur bi at whoever rejects tahut you know the banks where the water is or where there's water when the water leaves the banks and overflows when things transgress go beyond their limits this is tahut okay fa man yakfur bi at whoever does kufr of what tahut those entities those institutions those people that try to play god go beyond their limits who try to sit in the chair of Allah. وَيُؤْمِن بِاللَّهِ And they believe in Allah. فَقَدْ إِسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْأُرْوَةِ الْوُثْقَى Those people have a stronghold لَنْ فِصَامَ لَهَا That will never break. وَاللَّهُ سَمِيُّ عَلِيمٌ And Allah is your wali. Allah is going to help you. Allah has, you have such a powerful, 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 powerful helper behind you. So what do you have to lose? Allah has a plan. Allah has a reason why He does things. This becomes, a lot of this hikmah will become clear by the end of Surah Al-Imran. Allah Allah is the wali of the believers, the protector of the believers. He takes them out of darknesses into light, into the light of Islam and away from jahiliyyah. Those people who reject the truth, their friends and protectors are those that are trying to play God. Tahut. They take them out of light into the darknesses. This process of going from darkness into light, this is enlightenment. This is true enlightenment. This is, you know, what, uh, this is to be truly enlightened. Like, uh, like in philosophy, you, or theology, you can look at Buddha, or in philosophy, you can look at the enlightenment period, or, you know, like this is true enlightenment is Quran, and, and, and the understanding of the Book of Allah and His Messenger. Now, over here, the heavens and the earth, they belong to Allah. And He is the one who created everything and He has a plan for everything. Now, three examples are going to be given here. The first one is of Ibrahim in his argument with Namrud. Alam tara ladina haja Ibrahim fi rabbi. Did you not see the one who argued with Ibrahim in regards to his Rabb? An atahu Allahul mulk. And Allah gave him the kingship, meaning Namrud had, was given the kingship by Allah. Who else? Right? إِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّيَ الَّذِي يُحْيِي وَيُمِيدُ Now, the issue of life and death will be raised here in the three stories that we're going to, or the, not three stories, the three events, okay? إِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّيَ الَّذِي يُحْيِي وَيُمِيدُ Now he says to Namrud, the king, he says, look, my Allah is the one who gives life and death. You know, death is your best bodyguard. Why? Because 
it, your life is not going to end till it's going to end, until Allah decides it to end, right? Khalid and Walid went to so many battles. He didn't. He died on a deathbed. Radiyallahu an. He died on a deathbed. He death was his best bodyguard that protected him in, him in the battlefield. But on the other hand, the arrow of death is shot to reach you the minute you're born. But at the same time, death is also your best bodyguard. If qala Ibrahim Rabbi alladhi yuhyi wa yumit. And remember when Ibrahim والسلام, said, Allah is the one who gives life and death. Qala ana uhi wa umit. And Numrud said, no, I, I, give, I give life and I give death. Okay. He, so, you know, he brought captives. One, let one go and let him have life and the other one he killed. That's fine. Qala Ibrahim, fa inna Allah ya'ti bishamsi min al-mashriki fa'ti biha min al-maghrib. So then Ibrahim gave him an argument that contradicted what he was saying and showed the inconsistency of his thought. He, then he said, okay, this, in this dunya, you can control the little things of this dunya, but who's going to control the sun? Allah brings the sun from the east, you bring it from the west. Right? So then he found himself not finding an answer. He was dumbfounded. Wallahu la yahdil qawmal. Zalimin. Allah doesn't guide the wrong people. His intentions were wrong. And his argument he knew was just excuses. Wallahu la yahdil qawma zalimin. Allah doesn't guide the wrongdoing people. Now this ayah is very interesting. Aw kalladhi marra ala qariyatin wa hiya khawiyatun ala urushiha. Or like the man who Uzair alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had told Prophet Uzair alayhi salatu wasalam, go to Jerusalem. And bring the people of Bani Israel, bring the Jewish people back to back to Jerusalem. When he looked at Jerusalem, this was a total ghost town. It was like everything was destroyed. Not a brick was intact. And all the Muslims or people of Bani Israel were at that time were in Babylonia. They were under captivity. So he says, Again, issue of life and death. But here, now it's talking about in the sense of civilization, of a nation, of an ummah, coming back to life. Allah is going to give life to this after its death? Like there, this city is going to be revived with Islam again? فَأَمَاتَهُ اللَّهُ مِيَةَ آمِنْ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him death for a hundred years. ثُمَّ بَعَثَ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him. Right? And in the meantime, Bani Israel is still in captivity for those hundred years. قَالَ كَمْ لَبِثْتَ O Uzair, how long were you, you know, sleeping or dead? قَالَ لَبِثْتُ You know, I tarried, is actually the English word. I tarried يَوْمًا أَوْ بَعْدَ يَوْمًا For a day or a part of the day. قَالَ بَلْ لَبِثْتَ مِيَةَ عَامٍ No, no, no. You were asleep. You were gone for a hundred years. فَانْزُرْ إِلَى تَعَامِكَ وَشَرَابِكَ لَمْ يَتَسَنَّ Look at your food and your drink. Nothing has happened to it. It didn't disintegrate. It's just like it was. فَانْزُرْ إِلَى حَمَارِكَ And look at your donkey. نَجْعَلَكَ آيَةً لِلنَّاسِ And we will make you, Uzair alayhi salatu wasalam, a sign for the people. This is what, why? Because Uzair alayhi salatu wasalam became the, like the Messiah. He revived Bani Israel. He brought them back. Right? And so this is why they say Uzair ibn Allah. This is why the, the Bani Israel and the Jewish people said Uzair is the son of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this was the, the, one of the aspects of this. So, Undur ila hamarika. And somebody should do research on the issue of Uzair alayhi salatu wasalam being called the son of Allah in the Jewish community. I found some text, but I want something more. And we will make you a sign for mankind. Because now when he'll go back after a hundred years, then this is a big sign. And this will be a, a source of motivation for Bani Israel to come back to Jerusalem and to work for that. And look at the bones of this donkey, how we cover it, you know, uh, with its, uh, how we're going to cover it and bring it back and cover its, uh, the meat and the flesh, the flesh and then the skin and bring it back to life. فَلَمَّا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ So, you know, he asked, how will Allah bring this city back to life? After he saw this, and after a hundred years, he said, he, he realized, you know, and, and it's very interesting. قَالَ, قال أَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ I know now, I know now, Allah really, 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 Allah is really able to do whatever He wants. 
but everything happens according to his plan. And because things are following a certain law, a certain plan, you know, a certain routine, we don't realize the power of Allah sometimes behind the, uh, the events. This is also very interesting. This is the last ayah here explaining uh, Ayatul Kursi. Okay, so that was uh, Al Hayyul Qayyum, the one who gives life. Then you had uh, Numrud arguing with Ibrahim, and then you had the city of Jerusalem coming back to life, and now here. وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ أَرِنِي كَيْفَ تُحْيِي الْمَوْتَى And remember, and remember when Ibrahim said to his Rabb, أَرِنِي Show me, Ya Allah, كَيْفَ تُحْيِي الْمَوْتَى How do you give life to the dead? Very interesting question. قَالَ أَوَلَمْ تُؤْمِنْ Allah said, O oh, Ibrahim, do you not believe? قَالَ بَلَا He said, yes, I believe. وَلَكِنْ لَيَطْمَعِنَّ قَلْبِ But I want, I want sakina in my heart. I want itminan in my heart. This means that even though intellectually you can know something, but your heart has to be at ease too. And this is what Ibrahim والسلام, asked for. He said, I want to know how you give life to the dead. Right? The point is, Allah is, إِنَّ Allah عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ Allah can do whatever He wants. قَالَ خُذْ أَرْبَعَةً مِّنَ الطِّيرِ فَصُرْهُنَّ إِلَيْكُ Look, take four birds, and then, you know, after you train them, call them to yourself. ثُمَّ نَجْعَ Okay? Uh, and, and, and then once they have been trained, right, then kill them, break them into pieces, put them on different parts of the mountain, and then call them to you. So, they will come to you quickly. And know it well. Again, over there is, uh, over there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said at the end of this ayah, uh, Okay? And over here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah is the one who has might, and He is the one who has wisdom. Okay? So everything works according to Allah's wisdom. مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ حَبَّةٍ أَنْبَتَتْ سَبْعَ سَنَابِلَ فِي كُلِّ سُمْبَلِ مِئَةَ حَبَّةٍ The example of the people who spend in the cause of Allah. Now, Allah has said, look, Allah said, gave the example of pre-Badr Jihad of Bani Israel with Talut, okay, and Daud, and how they killed Goliath. Then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, spend, spend, spend. Then Allah gives Ayatul Kursi and the examples around it and how to revive an ummah, that an ummah can be revived again. Now here again, how is this going to happen? You have to spend, spend, spend. Spend how? In the cause of Islam. In the cause of Islam. This is the main thing. Islam is an ideology. Islam is an idea. And in the market of ideas, you have to promote the idea of Islam. مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ The example of those who spend their wealth in the cause of Allah. كَمَثَلِ حَبَّةٍ is like a seed or a grain. أَنْبَتَتْ سَبْعَ سَنَابِلَ That then from there grows seven ears. Seven, like you can say seven ears or seven corns. Um, so let me just uh, show you. So like this is an ear, this is an ear, this is an ear, this is an ear, this is an ear. You see that? So from in this is the crop, thing that will have the grains. So in the corn you have the grains of the corn, right? Each corn is the grain. Okay, so So it grows from there seven ears. In every ear, there's seven grains. So like the seven hundred, uh, sorry. In every ear, there is hundred habba, habba, uh, you know, uh, grains, you can say, okay, or seed. Okay. But in, in this uh, ayah, it means grain. Wallahu yudha'ifu liman yasha. And Allah increases it more than that if He wills. Wallahu wasiyun alim. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most extensive and most knowing. Alladhina yunfiquna amwalahum fi sabilillah. Again, those who spend their wealth in the cause of Allah. Thumma la yatbi'una ma anfaku manna wa la adha. Those who spend in the cause of Allah. And then they don't follow it by recalling favors. Oh, I gave you my this and I gave you my that. No, none of that. لَهُمْ أَجْرُهُمْ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ وَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ So those who spend and they don't follow it up with favors, right? They know they spent it in the way of Allah and it's in their in the real bank for them. لَهُمْ أَجْرُهُمْ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ وَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ They have no fear. There's no fear for them and no sadness for them. Okay. 
fear of the future, sadness of the past. Qawlu ma'rufun, a good word, wa maghfiratun, and forgiveness, okay? Khayru min sadaqatin tatba'uhu adha. It's better to say something little good than to give charity and then fall over. Remember I gave you this and remember I gave this to Islam and I remember I gave this to Islam. Don't do this. Wallahu ghaniyun halim. Allah is all rich and He is forbearing. Okay? He doesn't need you, you need Him. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, O you people who believe, la tubtilu sadaqatikum bil manni wal adha. Look, O you people who believe, don't destroy your sadaqa. Bilmanni wal adha, like recalling favors and hurting people. Okay, because for example, somebody's gonna go uh, do da'wah, or somebody's going for jihad, and he said, "I need a horse to go." You give him a horse, and then when he comes back, you're recalling the favors. Don't do that. Kaladi yunfiku malahu riya an nas. The example of such a person is like he did it just to show off in front of the people. La yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhir. And it's as if he doesn't believe in Allah and the Day of Judgment. Wa mafaluhu kamafali safwanin alayhi turab. The example of him is like, you know, there's a smooth rock on which there's, there is dust. Okay? Fa asabuhu wabilun. And then it rains heavy, right? And when the rain comes on the smooth rock, it just removes the dirt. So it can't grow anything on that rock now. Then it's just all bare. Okay. And then that rock, you can't grow anything on it. No matter how much you try hard, it, there nothing can grow on it. Kafirin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not guide a people that are denying the truth. Okay? مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ مِبْتِغَاءَ مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ So those people who spend their wealth seeking the مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ Okay, seeking the, 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 um, the uh, whatchamacallit, uh, seeking the, the مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ the, the رَضَاء of Allah, the happiness of Allah. Right, what tathbeetam min anfusihim, right, and uh, they want like confir confirmation for themselves, okay, and they want tathbiya, tath they want tathbeetam min anfusihim, kamathali habbatin bi radwatin asabuha wabil faatat uku laha di'afain. So, this now, the other example is contrast to that. So there is a, uh, a, uh, a rock, you can say, or some place, that it has heavy rain. So then it comes with crops twice as much. And if it's not even a strong rain, even a little bit of rain, that's even enough. وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ And Allah has full insight into whatever you're doing. أَيُوَدُّ أَحَدَكُمْ أَن تَكُونَ لَهُ جَنَّةٌ مِنْ نَخِيلٍ وَعْنَابٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِيَ الْأَنْحَارِ لَهُ فِيهَا كُلُّ ثَمَرَاتٍ وَأَسَابِهُ أَسَابَهُ الْكِبْرِ Now this is another example. So Allah has given the example of the rain on a smooth rock, a rain on a, in a high place where it yields a lot of fruit, Okay, and then now here, Ayuadu Ahadakum Antakuna Lahu Jannatum Min Nakhil. Does any of you wish that he would have a garden of of uh, of dates and a'nab, grapes, tajrim and tahtil and har under which river is flowing, meaning it's a self irrigation system, min kulli thamarat, and then all types of um, all types of fruits are coming from it, wa asabahul kibr. But he found himself in a in a time where he is very old. Right, وَلَهُ ذُرِّيَةٌ دُعَفَى And he has children that are very weak, right? وَأَصَابَتْهُ إِحْصَارٌ فِيهَا نَارٌ فَاحْتَرَقَتْ And he found in his garden a like a wind, a tornado, a whirlwind coming and puts everything on fire and everything goes away. You know, this is a very bad state to be. He's old and now he has children and now his garden is gone. كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَفَكَّرُونَ Sometimes when you do bad deeds, it eats up even the good deeds you have. Okay. Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu anfiqu min tayyibati ma kasabtum mimma akhrajna lakum min al-ard. Look, oh you people who believe, spend of the good and pure things. Ma kasabtum that you have earned. 
right? Have the intention. I'm going to earn money and give it in da'wah. I'm going to earn money and give it to organizations or groups that want to help the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Min tayyibatim or groups that want to establish the khilafah, okay? Or the groups that want to do any, any good deed that will help Islam. Okay, من طيبات ما كسبت مما أخرجنا من الأرض of the things that we've brought out from the earth. ولا يتمن ولا تتمم ولا تيمم الخبيث منه تنفقون لستم بآخذه إلا أن تغمضوا فيه. And don't try to just give the 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 worthless things that if it was given to you you wouldn't want it either. No, Islam. You should honor Islam, and when you give to Islam, you should give it with the best things that you have, right? وَاعْلَمُ أَنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌ حَمِيدٌ Look, Allah doesn't need your money. And Allah doesn't need anything from you. He is self-sufficient, self-praiseworthy. He, he is al-ghani. He is self-sufficient, self-praiseworthy. الشَّيْطَانُ يَعِدُكُمُ الْفَقْرَ وَيَعْمُرُكُمْ بِالْفَحْشَاءِ Look, shaitan makes you fear. He promises you fear. He, he promises you a faqra, that you'll get, you become poor. You spend money in anything, Right? You don't worry about becoming poor. But the minute you have to spend in the cause of Allah, you're like all of a sudden thinking, oh, but what's going to happen to my bank account? What will happen to my expenses? Right? وَيَعْمُرُكُمْ بِالْفَحْشَةِ And He orders you to do be indecent. وَاللَّهُ يَعِذُكُمْ الْمَغْفِرَ مِنْهُ وَفَضْلَ But Allah is promising you maghfira, forgiveness. وَمِنْهُ فَضْلَ And the fadl from Him, a reward that you don't even deserve. وَاللَّهُ وَاسِيُنْ عَلِيمٌ Allah is... Uh, you know, he encompasses everything and he is all knowing. Wallahu wasiyun alim. Yu'til hikmata, this is the real treasure. Wisdom, hikmah. Yu'til hikmata man yasha, he gives wisdom to whoever he wills, okay? Yu'til hikmata man yasha, wa man yu'til hikmata faqad utiya khayran kathira. And whoever has been given wisdom, he's been given a great, great, great source of goodness. وَمَا يَذَّكَّرُوا وَمَا يَذَّكَّرُوا إِلَّا أُولُوا الْأَلْبَابِ And no one is reminded of this except for the people of pure understanding. People that have a heart. People that can reflect. People that can think deeply. People that are living. That have a heart. وَمَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ نَفَقَةٍ أَوْ نَزَرْتُمْ So whatever you spend in the cause of Allah or whatever vows you have done. Like if you say, you know, if this, Allah, if this happens, I will give this much money to the poor. Uh... Allah knows well what's happening and what the intentions you have in the heart of giving, especially when it comes to giving wealth. And there is no one to help. Uh, there's no helper for the people that are wrongdoers. You promise a masjid, you promise a community some wealth, you don't give it, then Allah knows what's happening in your heart. وَإِن تُبْدُوا صَدَقَاتِ فَنَعِمْ مَا هِي If you hide your charity, it's a good thing. وَإِن تُخْفُوهَا تُؤْتُهَا الْفُقَرَى فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِن تُبْدُوا Sorry, I translated it. وَإِن تُبْدُوا If you show your, uh, your you know, gestures of giving in the cause of Allah, it's good. And it should be done if there are less people willing to give, then the person should do it with the intention that I'm doing it to encourage them and that's okay. So it depends upon the situation. وَإِن تُخْفُوهَا And if you hide it, وَتُؤْتُوا الْفُقَرَى and if you give it to the faqir, the poor person, فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ It is better for you. وَيُكَفِّرْ عَنْكُمْ سَيِّئَاتِكُمْ And Allah will cover. Over here, kufr means to cover. عَنْكُمْ سَيِّئَاتِكُمْ Your evil deeds. Okay? وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِيرٌ And Allah fully knows what you're doing. How do you think the companions, the Prophet, in a period of 22 years, were able to conquer all of Arabia? If they weren't giving on a daily basis, like trying to work hard to give something in the cause of Allah. It takes a lot of resources. Today, Christians believe in this idea called the tilt. You know what the tilt is? The tilt is the idea that we give 10% of our income. Churches take 10%. Our zakat is 2.5%. But we are in a situation where Islam needs a lot of help. It's going <coughs> to it's gonna take a lot more than 2.5% to bring Islam back up. You know, you have to realize this. لَيْسَ عَلَيْكَ هُدَاهُمْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهِ يَحْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ It is not on you, O Prophet ﷺ, to guide them. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهِ يَحْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ But Allah is the one who will guide whoever He wills. وَمَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَلِأَنْفُسِكُمْ Whatever you spend in the cause of Allah, it's for your own self, it's for your own good. وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا إِلَّا بْتِغَاءَ وَجْهِ اللَّهِ وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَيُوَفِّيكُمْ 
whatever you spend of good things, Allah will reward you. Allah will give you the full balance back, okay? وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تُظْلَمُونَ And you won't be wronged, okay? The only difference is, it's a credit. You have to pay now, you'll get your reward later, okay? Now, those people, there's some people, they're so busy in the cause of Allah, you know, maybe somebody had a business, and he used to also give Islamic lectures, and then his Islamic lectures increased and increased, and he had to cut down, cut down his his working hours and cut down more and cut down more and cut down more until he has no choice but to uh, help the cause of Islam and, and he has to leave his work. So now he's doing the work for the Muslim community. So that should be a pre- He's helping the cause of Islam. They're stuck in the cause of Allah. They don't have the time to do, to do job. You know, when you do a business, you have to put your, and those of you who've done business know this, how much time and effort you have to put your mind into doing the every moment you're thinking about the business. Same thing with da'wah. Day and night you're thinking about, okay, how can I improve this? It's like marketing. It's like business. You have to think about it day and night for it to happen. People didn't, in the olden times, accept Islam is in thousands and hundreds because people were just doing a partial uh, da'wah. No, they were, were, they were really thinking deep and hard. How can I... You really get into the hearts of these people at a mass level, right? Those fuqara, those people that are now poor because they had to give up their livelihood. They don't have the time now. They're not able to do the work of Islam and they have the qualities and the skills that they're the ones who should be in the front doing it. Uh, the because of their honor, even the the jahil think that they're rich because you know af, they are honorable people. They dress in an honorable way. They do things in an honorable way, and p- people are fooled to think that they're rich, but they're not rich. They just have self-respect and dignity, and they keep that. They don't ask the people out of you know self-dignity. They don't ask the people for anything. But you can see the traces of them on their faces. Whatever you give to these people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fully knows it. Allah is well aware. Okay? And those who spend in the cause of Allah in, in night and day, sometimes secret, sometimes showing it. For them is a reward with their Lord. There's no fear for them and no sadness for them. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. And may Allah help the wealthy people of this ummah to give in the cause of Islam. In the, in the cause of Islam. Now here, the topic is riba. One is, you're spending in the cause of Allah. And one is now, on the opposite of that, the cause where, the opposite. The, the, the thing that's going to spread facade in the world. Problems in the world. Okay? And so, um... I want to uh, share this with you, inshallah, if this is, uh, that's, uh, interest rates will be devastating to the U.S. economy for one big reason. Interest is, we all know what happened in 2007 with the housing crisis with interest, right? This shouldn't even be a really a big debate amongst Muslims anymore, that interest is a bad thing for the economy. And I'm going to show you something very interesting. The role of self-interest and competition in market economy, but uh, let's, a- actually, let me show you this. This is very interesting. This green, okay, this is the supply of money. You know the paper with ink on it? What is it called? Money? The paper with ink on it, that's this much. This is how much there is money circulating in the society. And you see this red pink thing here? That's the debt. There's more debt than even money. Does this even make sense to you? From U.S. money supply versus debt. Okay, 2017. This is what happens because there's interest. If there's no interest, this would never happen. Because you're accumulating debt and you're giving loans that don't even exist. You know, if you read how the fractional banking works, this is exactly what happens. The money that you have in the bank is supposed to be given to somebody else, but you're also able to take back your money while the other person has a loan. You ever think of that? And there's so many aspects, but ultimately, riba is a problem. And there are many verses about riba that come in Qur'an. And so we will uh, just go back to Qur'an right now. <clears throat> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
الَّذِينَ يَأْكُلُونَ riba. Those who eat riba. Now, eat. why is eat riba mentioned? Because the main purpose of riba, interest is what? Is to take riba, to eat riba. But if the main purpose is haram, then everything under it, which is to give, is also haram. I mentioned this rule also when it came to the pig. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَيْتَةَ وَالدَّمَّ وَلَحْمِ الْخِنْزِيرِ The meat of the pig is haram. Okay? Uh, so, why the meat of the pig? Because everything under the meat of the pig is haram too then. All of the pig is haram. Right? And I, like I said, there's some debates about the hair and so on and so forth. We're not going to go into that right now. But, الَّذِينَ يَعْكُلُونَ riba. That's the main purpose is to take interest. Those who eat the interest. And, and then, because that is haram, everything under it is haram, which is to give. الَّذِينَ يَعْكُلُونَ riba لَا يَقُومُونَ إِلَّا كَمَا يَقُومُ الَّذِي يَتَخَبَّطُهُ الشَّيْطَانُ مِنَ الْمَسْ Those people who take riba, they won't stand up on the Day of Judgment except like the person who's been beaten up by shaitan, who's been driven to craziness by shaitan. This is because they said, riba interest is just like business. Instead of giving something, some entity in loan, we're giving money in loan. Okay? But Allah has made uh, business halal and interest haram. Why? Because... In business, both sides are at risk. In business, if uh, the one who gives the money and the person who is working, let's say, they're both at risk. They may succeed, they may not succeed. But the one who gives money, he has collateral. The person giving the money, the banks in this case, they will never have risk. They will almost never have risk. They will take money from the business people. And this is why all the big businesses in America are failing, right? Everything from the Pan Am airplane. You remember the Pan Am? The, the airlines, and you take the American cars that needed to be bailed out by the government, the banks themselves that needed to be ba bailed out in 2007, okay? And then you had borders gone, and you had so many businesses gone, and, uh, you know, Best Buy is uh, had to declare bankruptcy and go through what it's going, but Uber is losing money. I have a video on that. Uber is losing money. Amazon losing money. Twitter losing money. It's because of the system. Both sides have to risk. One side can't guarantee and give the other person the loan. And then what happens? The debt is more than the money supply even. And that's just really just uh, like for a, a civilization, as from a civilizational perspective, that's just monstrous. Like that somebody would allow that to happen. فَمَنْ جَاءَهُ مَعُوذَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِ So whoever gets a warning from his Lord, his Rabb, فَانْتَحَى Then he should stop. And there and then. فَلَهُ مَا سَلَفْ Whatever you did in the past is fine. وَأَمْرُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ And his affair is with Allah. وَمَنْ عَادَ But if you go back to taking interest, فَأُولَئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ They're the people of the hellfire. هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ In it they will remain. Now we're stuck in this system. The Prophet said there will come a time that even the Dukhan or the Ghubbar will get on. Even the person who doesn't take interest will he'll get it. Right? Because you're in that system. What should be really you, what you're against is that system. Whether it's somebody in that situation or not, I'm not going to go into that. But if you are taking interest, regardless, if you're taking interest to make the big, get the biggest and the baddest house or the newest and the latest, greatest car and stuff, that's definitely very, very problematic. Right? Very, very problematic. If you even have to get a house, even if you have to do anything, right? Then get like just like pork, not desiring, not des actually desiring it, so you can do tawbah from it, right? Even if you're forced to eat pork, you should still ask Allah for forgiveness. And if you're forced to take interest, you should still ask Allah for forgiveness. Nor, nor desiring it, nor transgressing the limits. If you have to take interest for some reason, then you should do it in, in a state of karahiyah and protest that the system, the problem is the system we live in forces us to sin. It forces us to sin. The environment is such that it forces us to be distracted and sin. Even the most pious person is forced to sin because the system that we're in. And a lot of it is because of this interest-based system. يَمْحَقُ اللَّهُ الرِّبَا وَيُرْبِ الصَّدَقَاتِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroys riba and makes sadaqah grow. Sadaqah grows. You give the money from the people that have money to the poor, help the poor, and get them on their feet. And this helps society. Allah doesn't love, doesn't love those people that reject the truth and are sinners and sinners after that. 
ان الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات واقاموا الصلاه واتوا الزكاه لهم اجرهم عند ربهم ولا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون indeed those people who believe and do good deeds right and the opposite of this are those people who reject the truth and do fasad on earth واقاموا الصلاه and the believers they what they establish the prayer they give the zakat lahum ajruhum because zakat is coming in opposition to what riba riba destroys the society zakat helps build the society you take the money from the rich give it to the poor and now you have more bigger a society needs a big middle class and that happens by what taking the poor people and helping them stand on their feet and how do you do this one way to do this is zakat how will you meet the people who need zakat you'll meet them when you're praying the rich is there the poor is there now this is the opportunity for the people to become friends that are rich and poor and for the rich people to become brothers with the people that are poor people and this is probably the one of the biggest problems of the modern times is the rich don't really connect with the poor and the poor really don't connect with the rich and the poor he hate the rich and the rich hate the poor the fact is that when you stand in prayer it's, there's no hate there should be no animosity between the rich and the poor to each other right it's not like if uthman is standing he's uh, very rich and he's standing with bilal that they should have uh, hatred for each other or be jealous of each other no but uthman then will find the poor people and help them and 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 support them and so on and so forth okay so this is how you do that and if you do this if you establish the prayer and give this to god this is the job of every imam the job of every imam is in his in his in his imamat of a masjid that his job is to connect the rich with the poor to make friendships between the rich and the poor of different races and different people and help help people stand on their feet this is the job of the imam to build a community that is strong and that when there is a crisis then the rich the, the rich and the poor can come together to to have a strong voice in which both the rich and the poor agree based upon the teachings of islam ya ayyuhal ladina amanu taqullaha wa dharu ma baqiya min ar-riba in kuntum mu'minin oh you people who believe again ittaqullah fear allah meaning what fear allah means allah can take action against your wrong action either in this life or the next life this is taqwa wa dharu ma baqiya min ar-riba then leave whatever has been uh, uh whatever is uh, of riba that you have of in kuntum mu'minin okay fa in lam taf'alu this system of riba is so bad that allah says fa in lam taf'alu if you don't do this fa'dhanu bi harb min allah wa rasuli then no allah and his messenger are at war against the system you don't then muslims are thinking of prospering in this system to growing in this system to becoming part of this system no the interest system is a big part of this dajjali system that we're in wa in tub wa in tubtum falakum ra'usum amwalikum wa la tuzlamuna wa la wa la tuzlamuna wa la tuzlamun look if you repent if you go back right you have the principle of your wealth and don't wrong and don't be wronged wa in ka wa in now there are going to be people that they have debt and they have to pay their debt so how should you treat them okay wa in kana dhu usratin fa nadiratun ila maysira there are people that are in difficulty give them some time ask give them some time give them some leave they have difficult times right you have a loan for 30 years and in 30 years you miss a few months and they take away take back the uh, the house from you right in 30 years there'll be like 6 months 7 months 1 year that you'll have bad time no but instead you should look and give them an easy time wa anta sadaqu khairul lakum if you give sadaqa to them this is even better for you right this is helping actually building society wa taqu yawman turja'una fihi ila allah this is uh, according to some of the narrations and a very strong narration this is probably the last ayah the ayahs of riba and this ayah is the last ayah that was revealed to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the last ayah that came to his chest wa taqu yawman turja'una fi turja'una fihi ila allah fear that day where you will be returned back to allah thumma tawaffa kullu nafsin bima kasabat wa hum la yudlamun and every soul will be given its whatever it's earned right wa hum la yudlamun and you are not going to be wrong you'll be given whatever you deserve ya ayyuhal ladina amanu now these are the ayat regarding uh business transactions so just so that we can take a look here the prophets uh, you know uh, of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spending in the cause of allah as we saw that that was a big part of this right and uh then you have uh after that you have the prohibition of interest and then we have the business transactions okay so let's see if i can get this to go up a little bit uh Okay, let's go back to Quran first. 
يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا تداينتم بدين إلى أجل مسمى فاكتبوه All you people who believe when you make when you do إذا تداينتم بدين إلى أجل مسمى فاكتبوه Okay So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says All you people who believe when you make a contract بدين Okay Of a debt Okay إلى أجل مسمى So when you make a contract of debt إلى أجل مسمى to a certain appointed time فَكْتُبُهُ uh, Then you write it down. Now, to write it down, there is this. فَلْيَكْتُبْ بَيْنَكُمْ كَاتِبٌ Let somebody who knows how to read and write, write down the, uh, write down the uh, kitab of, of the transaction, the, the, in, the information. بِالْعَدَلْ With justice. وَلَا يَعْبَ كَاتِبٌ أَنْ يَكْتُبَ كَمَا عَلَّمَهُ اللَّهُ And let not a writer who knows how to write refuse to write as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught him how to write. فَلْيَكْتُبْ Let him write. But وَالْيُمْلِ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِ حَقُّ But let the person who owns owes the debt, right? Uh, let him give the wordings of the transaction. Okay? وَيَتَّقِ اللَّهَ رَبَّ وَيَتَّقِ اللَّهَ رَبَّ Let him fear his Rabb. وَلَا يَبْخَسْ مِنْهُ شَيْئًا Don't leave anything out. فَإِنْ كَانَ عَلَيْهِ حَقُّ سَفِيهًا And if the person who owns the debt is weak, his, his mind is, is like, let's say, retarded in the medical sense, أَوْ ضَعِيفًا Or he's too weak, أَوْ لَا يَسْطِي أَنْ يُمِلَّ Or he cannot dictate the terms, فَالْيُمْلِلْ وَلِيُّهُ بِالْعَدْلِ So let somebody who is going to be his wali, his caretaker, let him dictate the conditions based upon justice. وَاسْتَشْحِذُوا شَهِيدَيْنِ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ So let there be two witnesses amongst the men of you. And if you don't find the men, فَإِنْ لَمْ يَكُونَ رَجُلَيْنِ فَرَجُلٌ وَمْرَأَتَانِ مِمَّنْ تَرْضَوْنَ مِنَ الشُّحَذَاءِ And if you don't find two men, then one man and two women. Now there's a lot of debate about this, so I'm going to just indulge in something very interesting. And that is that, why two women? Okay? The reason is because generally when it's, there are two, two, three reasons, but this will be very in interesting when we look at the case of Imam Shafi's mother in this case. She was, uh, because when you know there's difference of opinion, oh, wh what was the terms and what was this and what really happened, what was really said. So you're going to like witness, right, in court what really happened. And now the interrogator, the judge, is going to interrogate the guy or the lady he's going to interrogate her and for that you know generally there's going to be a private room where they will be interrogated because you don't want them to listen like for example if somebody says something then the other person can just say exactly what the first person says in public you want to interrogate them separately and see exactly what their stories are if they meet if they're having a basically the same story or a little bit different story or like completely different story right if it's completely same generally in uh in the field of uh of forensic psychology that's generally a bad sign if it's kind of the same that's actually a good sign if it's totally different then that's not good for the people that are giving witnesses either now so what happened with imam shafi's mother is the man the judge in this case called her to interrogate her about what interrogate her about a certain issue okay and she was there alone and she said, no, I want somebody, somebody because I can't be alone in a room with a man. So that is the one reason is that a woman cannot be in a alone in a room with a man anyway. Number one. Number two um, is that women generally needs a support system, somebody to support them. And so if this ayah becomes clear that she's there just to support her and then also uh, there is another issue that goes with that that I'm going to explain to you. But the fuqaha have a lot of different opinions regarding a lot of different issues. According to many of them, there has to be at least be one man and then two women. Okay, or uh, it can't be just like two women and two women. For example, four women. According to some of the fuqaha, the other big difference of opinion is: is this only for financial transactions, or is this for all types of transactions? Like hadith narrations, one Aisha radiallahu anha narrates it. That's enough. For example, so there are there are many debates within the Islamic tradition also about this. Okay. فَإِن لَمْ يَكُونَ رَجُلَيْنِ فَرَجُلٌ وَأَمْرَأَتَانِ مِمَّنْ تَرْضَوْنَ مِنَ الشُّحَدَاءِ those two women that you agree upon, meaning they have good character and so on and so forth, 
وَإِن تَضِلَّ إِحْدَاهُمَا فَتَذَكَّرَ إِحْدَاهُمَا الْأُخْرَى So one will speak and she doesn't interject unless something wrong is said. Then the second one can remind her. So over here, there, you can say there is, uh, she's there as moral support, right? And she only interferes if she says, she doesn't give a testimony. The testimony is from one of them and the other one just reminds her if she makes a mistake. وَلَا يَعْبَدْ شُهَدَاء إِذَا مَا دَعُوا And let not any woman or male or any shaheed, any witness, refuse when they are called. Now, the other thing, there are two other things here, is that um, generally, um, Islam doesn't want women going to the court system, to going for business transactions. They, they, uh, Islam doesn't want to get them into a situation where their lives can be in danger or some something, you know, something, uh, some... Uh, some something bad could happen to them because of uh, of criminal court or even in in business court whether uh, you know or business transaction issues uh if it if if it hurts uh the, the ladies islam doesn't want that so it, islam made the women difficult to come to court made the conditions difficult and if she comes she should not come alone she should come with her moral support okay وَلَا يَعْبَدْ شُهَدَاءِ إِذَا مَا دَعُوا Now over here, one thing that I do want to share with you is something interesting, is that there, this is a real issue that needs to be looked upon. Now there are some cases that contradict with one another, but there is evidence to suggest the following, okay? And that is that, uh, let me just show you, female and forgetful, uh, th this is written by a psychologist, okay? Um, she's a psychologist, she's written this book, and I would... I'm going to talk maybe one day on this issue, just on this issue. And this is not to be uh, antagonistic to women in any way, because there's aspects of memory that women have better than men. Okay, so let me just uh, share this with you. And, and again, I'm not trying to be antagonistic to women, but just for information, and you can think about it, women are more likely to be affected by AD and uh, dementia than men. As women reach menopause, they struggle with forgetfulness and brain fog, which is, it's things are confusing, concentration is confusion, and for some, this memory depletion continues after menopause. Some researchers have found that women have difficult, difficulty with ver verbal affluency at these times too, okay? And uh, uh, let's also look at... Uh, Memory loss in women is associated with unbalanced hormones manifest itself in various ways. Okay, experiencing loss of memory, foggy, foggy thinking, and difficulty concentrating on all in in all point to a point to a hormonal imbalance. Okay, okay, and also um, I wanted to share with you one more thing, but inshallah khair. <coughs> Here, okay, and that is. Short-term memory is better in women, okay? So females have been shown to have consistently stronger short-term or working memory than men. Women thought to be able to hold more items of verbal information in short-term storage at once. This advantage of short-term memory is thought to be linked to a woman's superior ability to attend to more than one task at once, multitask. Recent research shows that men have advantage in specific subtypes of short memory, specifically those pertaining to visual and spatial. Meaning like if there's a contract, what was written on the contract, so the visual men are better. So this can be part of it. In a brain activation study, working memory tasks showed more bilateral activation in male brains versus overall left hemisphere activation in the female brains means they're doing the same task, which is memory, but different parts of the brain are uh, showing that they're functioning in the male and the female. This provides evidence that different brain structures may be responsible for short-term memory differences in males versus females. Some Muslim brother or sister should do research on this. Okay. So now let's go back, inshallah. Uh, if there is not two two men, then one man and two females of those that you agree upon as witnesses. If one of them forgets, let one of them remind the other. And let not any witness refuse to come when they're called. 
ولا تسأموا أن تكتبوا صغيرة ولا كبيرة إلا أجلي. Okay, and you have to have the time period in it and don't leave out anything big or small. ذلكم أقسط عند الله. This is more just of an execution inside of Allah. Whenever there is, okay, I forget, uh, there's a hadith of the Prophet that mentions three things. One of them is that, you know, a Muslim must, and there's no one to blame but themselves. If you don't write uh, the contract, then it's it's your fault, right? Then you didn't write the contract, and 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 now that you don't have a contract, you can't take them to court. This is your fault. It's it recommend Allah is saying this for a reason, right? And we all need, uh, you know, they say the locks are made to keep honest people away. So you can say contracts are made to keep honest people honest too. Even the honest person can forget, right? And uh. ولا تسأموا don't leave out تكتبوا صغيرة وكبيرة إلى أجل write every big and small detail to its appointed time ذلكم أقسط عند الله وأقوم للشهادة ألا ألا ترتابوا ألا ترتابوا and this is better for you that you don't have any doubt إلا أن تكون تجارة حاضرة تضيرونها بينكم فليس عليكم جناه ألا تكتبوا there's only one condition in which you don't have to write it that is that if it's تجارة حاضرة if it's just, you know, hand to hand, hand to hand, I gave you a banana, you gave me two dollars, you don't have to write this down, okay? Then Allah says, وَشْحِذُوا وَأَشْحِذُوا إِذَا تَبَايَعْتُمْ وَلَا تُطَارْ كَاتِمٌ وَلَا شَهِيدٌ And uh, look, give witness, إِذَا تَبَايَعْتُمْ And have wit uh, give witness when you make uh, a... Uh, transaction. ولا تضارا كاتب ولا شهيد. Let there be no harm on the writer nor the witnesses. وإن تفعلوا فإنه فسوق بكم. If you do anything to harm either the writer or the person that's a witness, this is an evil deed from you. واتقوا الله. Fear Allah. ويعلمكم الله. And Allah teaches you how to do things. والله بكل شيء عليم. And Allah has the knowledge of all things. وإن كنتم على سفر. And if you are traveling. Right, and you're not in your hometown, and you don't really have. Uh, there's no like, let's say, the, in the traveling, there's a village, a small village. It doesn't have a scribe. No one knows how to read or write. Then what to do? In kuntum ala safarin, walam tajidu katiban. If you don't find a scribe to write, farihanun. Then give something in ransom. Okay, like maybe let's say you give your. Um, let's say you had a nice necklace or, or a nice watch, right? You say, okay, look, keep this and, and, and give me this and I'll come back and pay you back. Maqbuda. And let them take it. فَإِنْ أَمِنَ بَعْدُكُمْ بَعْدَ فَالْيُؤَذِّ الَّذِي تُؤْمِنَ الْأَمَانَةَ هُوَ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ رَبَّ So when he pays back the money, let him take his ransom back. وَلَا تَكْتُمُ الشَّهَادَةَ Don't hide the shahada. Don't hide the testimony. وَمَا يَكْتُمْهَا For whoever hides it, فَإِثْمُ آثِمٌ قَلْبُهُ His, he has a sinful heart. وَمَا تَعْمَلُونَ وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ عَلِيمٌ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fully aware of the things that you do. Now these are the three last ayahs. Again, ending with imaniyat. Just it started with imaniyat. الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبُ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ So it's ending with this. And these were, uh, the last two of these ayahs were given to the Prophet ﷺ in Mi'raj. So otherwise, this would be the end of Surah Al-Baqarah on earth. And then that is the ending of the whole surah when it includes the two ayahs revealed in Mi'raj. That was given to the Prophet when Allah was, uh, the Prophet was meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Look, the heavens and the earth belong to Allah. Right? So he knows Everything and he's teaching you. In in Whatever you uh, show of your own self, or you hide it, Allah will take hisab of you. Allah will take account of you. The angels write down what you do. They know what you do, and the book and the, is what there what you have done, and that's given to your right hand or the left hand, right? And the book that you have done. Then one of the narrations explains, and there are other opinions on this issue, but then you take this book to the scales. And when you're before Allah, your good deeds will be put on the scale to see if it's heavy or your bad deeds are heavy. Okay? So your book is taken, your deeds are taken and weighed. Okay? But then when Allah talks to you, when you stand before Allah, it's not going to be about what you just did. 
It's going to be oh, wa intu wa intu do ma fi anfusikum. If you hide what is, if you show what is in yourselves, aw tukfuhu or you hide it, you has kum bihi. Allah take account of what was inside you. What were you really thinking? What were your intentions? What was your niyyah? يَغْفِرُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءَ He forgives whoever he wills. وَيُعَذِّبُ مَنْ يَشَاءَ And then he'll punish whoever he wills. وَاللَّهُ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ And Allah has the power over all things. Now here. آمَنَ الرَّسُولُ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ Believed the messenger of whatever was sent to him from his Rabb. وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ And the believers. كُلٌّ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُولِهِ They all believed in Allah and the angels and the books and the Rasul. لَا نُفَرِّقُ بَيْنَ أَحَدٍ مِّنْهُمْ They accept all the messengers, they don't make any distinction. وَقَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا They say we listen and obey. How does that happen? When you give the bay'ah to the Amir, have a jama'ah that is working to establish Islam. And you say, yes, I'm going to listen and obey. How are you going to establish Islam? How are you going to bring Islam in the world? You can't do it alone. You need a jama'ah. This becomes clear in the next surah, Surah Al-Imran. غُفْرَانَكَ رَبَّنَا وَإِلَيْكَ الْمَصِيرِ Then how do you spend money for Islam? You have to be in a jama'ah. You're spending money in the jama'ah to help Islam and to help its projects, to help its many initiatives, right? غُفْرَانَكَ رَبَّنَا وَإِلَيْكَ الْمَصِيرِ Oh Allah, forgive us and our return is to you in the end. And what is your dua? And over here, general principle, لَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا وَسَعَهَا Allah doesn't put a burden on a soul more than it can bear. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't put a burden upon you except to your full capacity. Illa wus'aha, to its full capacity. Laha ma kasabat wa alayha ma ktasabat. Right? And you'll get, uh, you know, whatever you've earned is what you're going to get. And then they pray what? The people that are believers, they pray to Allah. Rabbana la tu'akhidna in nasina wa akhtana. Oh Allah, don't take us for task for the things that we made a mistake in or we forgot. Rabbana la tu'akhidna in nasina for what we forget or akhtana or make a mistake. رَبَّنَا وَلَا تَحْمِلْ عَلَيْنَا إِسْرًا كَمَا حَمَلْتَهُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِنَا Look at the people before, one of the types of difficulties that they went through, okay? When they had to work for the cause of Islam in their times. So Allah, don't put that type of burden upon us. We are weak, okay? وَلَا تَحْمِلْ عَلَيْنَا إِسْرًا كَمَا حَمَلْتَهُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِنَا رَبَّنَا وَلَا تُحَمِّلْنَا مَا لَا طَاقَتْ لَنَا بِهِ And you're also praying, Allah, don't put a burden on us for which we don't have the strength to bear. Be kind to us, forgive us, and have mercy upon us, and help us. You are our protector and our guide. You are our protector, our wali. Allah, help us against the people that have rejected the truth and are bent upon and against uh, going against Islam and your teachings. So here, Surah Al-Baqarah has ended. Let me end by this uh, this portion before we begin the next surah to talk about a few of the common points between Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah Al-Imran. They both start with Alif Lam Mim. The more emphasis on Surah Al-Baqarah uh, is on Iman. The more emphasis you'll see in Al-Imran will be on Islam. Over there, the discussion is with Bani Israel and the Jewish community. Here in Surah Al-Imran, that's coming next, the bigger discussion is going to be with the Christian community. And then you'll find many of these same ayat, many of the Critical ayahs and critical themes are going to be repeated almost word to word as you'll see. So inshallah ta'ala with that you'll see that there is this pairing between Baqarah and Ali Imran. So we will go into that inshallah. Uh, so we will go into that right now. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Now we begin with Surah al Imran. Both of these surahs start with Alif Lamim. This is one of the aspects of the two surahs having a pair. So without any, and also the beginning of both of these surahs start with uh, the discussion about Qur'an. Over there was the Alik al-Kitab ul fi. This is the book in which there's no doubt. And then after that, the challenge was given. If you have any doubts in this book, then produce something like this Qur'an. And also that Allah is not shy to give an example. As long as it's, meaning Allah is not shy to give an appropriate example. Even if it is of a fly or even something less than that. Over here, another uh, you see, you could say an aspect of Quran and clarification regarding Quran and guidance from Quran uh, is mentioned over there. It says regarding the parables, uh, bihi kathira wa yahdi bihi kathira. Allah guides many by it and leads many astray. Over here, the same topic of another aspect of Quran is also mentioned. So very quickly, inshallah ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alif la meem. No one knows what these letters mean except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. Then Allah says, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum. 
there's no divine but Allah and he is the all living and the one who sustains everything he is the one O Prophet وسلم, who sent down the book to you in truth confirming that which was before it and he sent down the uh, Torah and he sent down the Injil the Torah had the law of Allah and Injil had the wisdom of Allah and Quran has both this will be a topic that we'll cover when uh, certain specific ayat come Bin it was a guidance not al huda which is a huda al huda is quran huda lil muttaqin but it was guidance but now there is al huda and al furqan min qablu huda lin nas before it was guidance for people wa anzal al furqan now this furqan has come it will differentiate what is right and what is wrong what is haq and batil regarding the changes of the previous books it'll it'll be the quran helps us extract what is correct from it and leave out what is wrong wa anzal al furqan inna alladhina kafaru those people that are bent upon over there also in surah al-baqarah you have inna alladhina kafaru sawa'una alayhim those people that are bent upon um, uh, going against the truth over here uh, the same thing inna alladhina kafaru bi ayatillah those who are bent upon denying the signs of Allah, lahum a'adhabun shadeed, for them is a painful punishment. Wallahu azizun zuntiqam. Allah is severe, Allah is aziz, mighty, and in taking intiqam in revenge. In Allah la yakhfa alayhi shay'un fil ardi wa la fil sama. Indeed, for Allah, nothing is hidden, whatever is in the earth, nor what is in the sky, or in the heavens. He is the one who shapes you in the womb of the mother however he likes. He made you the way you are. He loves you the way you are. He's the one who made you the way you are. Over there in Surah Al-Baqarah you had, Ya Yuhannas, inna ya'budu rabbakum alladhi khalakakum. O mankind, become slaves to your Lord who created you, meaning I created you. And this same idea is here. There's no divine. Allah is Al Aziz, the most mighty and Al Hakim, the most wise. Look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down to you the book in which are ayatum muhkamat. There are clear commandments in it, the clear message in it, right? This is the main part of the book. This is what I'm trying to do, inshallah, here, which is to give you the message, the muhkamat, the real message of Quran. This is the mother of the book. And then there are some that are shady in their meaning. They're not clear in their meaning. Okay, for example, alif lam mim. Okay, and for example, uh, other aspects that we don't yet understand. Uh, particularly regarding the attributes of Allah and the actions of Allah mentioned in Quran. Okay, for example, Allah subhanahu wa taala sat on His throne. We don't know what it means. We cannot. But those people who have a heart that has a problem in it, they're going to follow these aspects that have nothing to do with the message of Islam. That they have to do with the guidance of Islam. But after these, you know, making Quran into like a puzzle that needs to be solved. In the same way, the uh, because the the big uh, address address in the surah is going to be with the Christian people. They took the words, Kalimatillah, the word of Allah, uh, regarding the uh, the person of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. They said, oh, you know, Quran says he's the word of Allah. So he's Allah. You know, the word of Allah is Allah, right? So Isa is Allah. And it, so the point here is that the muhkamat, the clear teaching, say he's not a son. You're taking a part of Quran and and giving it a ta'wil, an, an interpretation to fit your feeling or your uh, your uh, view of something. So this is not allowed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down this book and it are ayat that are muhkamat. This is the fundamental of the book, the purpose of the book. And then there are shady unknown verses. And some of this could mean things that are not yet discovered. Like Sab'a samawat seven heavens. We don't know what that means. So maybe one day, Allahu A'lam, we might have an idea. As for the people who have a problem in their art, those people that have a problem in their heart, they follow these shady things, the not so clear things, and and give it a specific interpretation. And this this is called what ibtigha al fitna, seeking fitna wa ibtigha al ta'wili in in a specific trend, uh, interpretation that they like. 
No one knows the true interpretation of these things except Allah. No one knows what Alif Lam Mim means except Allah, for example. Those people that are entrenched in knowledge, Look, we believe in this book and we believe in everything, but they don't follow after these puzzles. They go after the message of Quran in order to make Allah happy. All of this is from our Rabb. وَمَا يَذَّكَّرُوا إِلَّا أُولُوا الْأَلْبَابِ no one, And none is reminded of this except for the people of pure understanding. What do they pray? After Allah has guided you to the Qur'an, to the message of the Qur'an, it's very important to pray. Allah, after giving me guidance, right? Don't let my heart deviate from the true guidance. Maybe there was somebody, he was not Muslim, and he was in the worst situation. And then now Allah has guided him to Islam. So, رَبَّنَا لَا تُذِعْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't let our hearts deviate to the wrong path. Ba'da idh hadaytana, after you've guided us, wahablana, and give us the gift. Milla dunka, specifically from your, yourself. Rahma, give us the mercy, the gift of your mercy. Inna ka antal wahab, indeed you are the one who gives the gifts. Rabbana inna ka jami'un nas. O Allah, you're going to ga gather the people. Liyawmin la raib. On the day in which there's no doubt. Over there, kitabu la raib. Over here, liyawmin la raib. On the day in which there's no doubt. Meaning the day of judgment. Inna Allah la yukhliful mi'ad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not break his promises. Inna ladhina kafaru lan tughni anhum amwaluhum. Okay, so now, over here, now the precursor is, the discussion is starting. Now, over here, let me just share with you very quickly. So the Al Imran, Quran and previous scriptures. And now, True Deen and Post Badr Review. Okay, so Battle of Badr has happened. If you remember, I mentioned in Surah Al Baqarah that uh, there was the pre Badr battle of Bani, the Badr of Bani Israel was mentioned as a pre Badr battle. Now, this is revealed after the Battle of Uhud. Okay, and so now a review is going to be made of Battle of Badr in order to criticize the mistakes of the Muslims regarding Uhud, which will happen uh, towards the end of this surah. Uh, I don't, we won't get to it today, but in the next juz it'll be there, meaning tomorrow. So, in the, but over here, Allah is reminding you, us, uh, those who deny the truth, they will not be benefited by their wealth, nor their children, in front of Allah, any. They, these are the people of the hellfire, because they're denying the truth, okay? Like the behavior of Fir'aun. And those before Fir'aun. They, they made a lie of our signs. And so this was a prophecy in the time of the Prophet. That Islam would have victory. And it did. They denied our signs. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took them to task for their sins. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most severe in taking Punishment. Kafaru, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Let let it be declared to the people who dis uh, disbelieve or deny the truth. Satuglabuna wa tuhsharuna ila jahannam. You will be overcome and then gathered on the day of judgment to the hellfire. Wa bi'sal mihad. And what a bad ending place that is. Now here is a review of what happened at Badr. Qad kana lakum ayatun fi fi atayn al taqata. Now already there was a sign for you in the two the two groups that met, meaning in Badr on one side is Quraysh and the other side is the Muslims, the two groups that met one group was fighting in the path of Allah and the other it was a, a group that did not believe when they were looking at the believers they saw twice as many as the number Allah helps with his, uh, Allah gives support with his help, whoever he wills. Indeed, in this are, is an ibra, is a lesson for people who have, who have sight, real seeing, the ability to see for real. Now, <coughs> before the message begins, to, because this has to be clarified to the Muslims and to the people that the message is being given to, that zuyina lil nasi hubbu shahwat. It made beautiful for man or for people. Anas is used here, but it means men specifically. Anas, according to Imam Shafi's uh, book, Ar-Risala, over here in this ayah, the word nas means 
men but you can say human beings but because of the shahwat min an nisa to the lust of the women is mentioned here so then he said nas here means men and this is an example of where there's a general world word meaning mankind but it means specifically men so there's a general wor word but has a specific meaning zuyna lin nas yuhubbu shahwat min an nisa and has made, made it has been made beautiful to men the love of the shahwa, the lust for women, wal banin and children, wal qanatir al munqantarat min al dhahbi wal fidda, and to have you know you can say heaps and heaps of gold and silver, wa khair al musawama and to have you know the best horses, wal anam and cattle, wal harth and and uh, fields, pasture you know, farmland and a ranch. This is, you know, the small benefits of this hayat dunya right? Wallahu indahu husnul ma'ab. Okay? And then the Prophet is told to say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, today I think my dyslexia is getting to me. Uh, o Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to them, should I tell you something better than this? For those people who have taqwa in the Rabbihim with their their Rabb, they have taqwa of Allah. They will be in residential gardens in which the rivers flow with their wives, right? And the happiness of Allah. And Allah is has full insight over his servants. Alladina Yakuluna, those servants who say what? Yakuluna Rabbana Ainna na amanna. Oh Allah, we have definitely believed. We have believed. Fakfillana but forgive us because we make mistakes. Dhunubana Fakfillana Dhunubana Wakina Adab and Nar and save us from the hellfire. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the qualities of these people. As Sabiri. Now this becomes very important in this surah because the word sabr is going to play a very important role in this particular surah as you'll see. In fact the last ayah has the word sabr in it which we'll get to tomorrow. Was sabirina, do you pray to Allah have these qualities? Was sadiqina and those who spend in the cause of Allah. Wal qanitina and those who, you know, have uh, uh, you can say um humbleness before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they're standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wal munfiqina and those who spend in the cause of Allah. Sadiqin sorry here means truthful. Okay. Uh, so was sabirina was sadiqina wal qanitina wal munfiqina wal mustaghfirina bil ashar and those who for, uh, for, seek forgiveness in, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the early hours of the morning Shahid Allahu annahu la ilaha illahu Allah bears witness there's no divine other than him wal malaikatu and the angels wa ulul ilm and the people of knowledge qa'iman bil qist they are on qist, they are on justice. La ilaha illahu al azizul hakim. There's no divine and he's al azizul hakim. He's the one who has power and he is the one who has wisdom. Now again, like I said, Islam, the word Islam, in contrast to Iman and Sutul Baqarah, will be a big issue here in this surah. Inna dina inda Allah al Islam. The deen with Allah is Islam. The system has to be Islam. وَمَا اخْتَلَفَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ إِلَّا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَتْهُمُ الْعِلْمِ بَغْيًا بَيْنَهُمْ They didn't differ until, the, the people of the book didn't differ until the the bayinat, uh, the truth, the clear signs came to them, knowledge came to them. مَا جَاءَتْهُمُ الْعِلْمِ بَغْيًا بَيْنَهُمْ Out of just the mere wish of dominance. وَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ Whoever does, denies the ayat of Allah, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ سَرِيُّ الْحِسَابِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very, very swift in taking punishment. فَإِنْ جَاءُكُمْ فَإِنْ جَاءُكَ O Prophet Wasallam, if they come to you, فَقُلْ أَسْلَمْتُمْ Have you surrendered to Allah? Like in your heart, do you feel you surrender to Allah? Or are you playing games? أَأَسْلَمْتُ وَجِيَ لِلَّهِ وَمَنِ اتَّبَعًا قُلْ إِنْ جَاءُكَ فَقُلْ أَسْلَمْتُ وَجِيَ لِلَّهِ وَمَنِ اتَّبَعًا Say, O Prophet ﷺ, I have surrendered to Allah and those that follow me. قُلْ لِلَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابُ وَالْأُمِّيِّينَ أَأَسْلَمْتُمْ And O Prophet, say to the people of the book and the Arabs that were there. أَأَسْلَمْتُمْ Have you surrendered in your heart? فَإِنْ أَسْلَمُوا If you really have surrendering, the wish to surrender to Allah in your heart, فَقَدِحْتَدَوْ Then you will be definitely guided. 
if they turn away, then your job is only to convey the message. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has full insight over his servants. Indeed, those people who deny the truth and deny the signs of Allah and kill the prophets without a just cause. And they kill those people who command people of justice. Okay. فَبَشِّرْهُمْ بِعَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ Give them the news of a very painful punishment. أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ حَبِتَتْ أَعْمَالُهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ These are the people whose actions have been lost in this world and in the next world. وَمَا, هم من وما لَهُمْ مِنْ نَاصِرِينَ They have no helpers. أَلَمْ تَرَى إِلَّا الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا نَصِيبًا مِنَ الْكِتَابِ Have you not seen the people who have been given a portion of the book? Right? And they're supposed to believe in this book. What happens? They, they're called to their own book when they're said, look, why don't you do what your own book says? They turn away from their own books. This is why a new ummah was needed, that a new book of Allah would be revealed and with an ummah, a people that would be not turning away from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unfortunately, today, our situation is not quite like that. This is because they say, the fire is not going to touch us except for a few days. And they have been غرر, they have been destroyed in their deen, in their, in their, in their religion because of what the lies that they utter. كَيْفَ إِذَا جَمَعْنَاكُمْ لِيَوْمٍ لَا رَيْبَ فِي How will it be that day when you will be gathered on the day in which there's no, there's no doubt? وَوُفِيَتْ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا كَسَبَتْ And you'll, every soul will be paid what it is owed, what it is earned. وَهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ And they won't be wronged. Right? This, this theme comes over and over again in the Quran. They won't be wronged. They won't be wronged. قُلِ اللَّهُ مَمَالِكَ الْمُلْكِ Look. This issue of the world, this world's kingship, it's in the hands of Allah. The believers will get it, but when they deserve it. And that is going to come towards the, in tomorrow's lesson, that will be a big part. When Ohad is discussed, a lot of these issues are clarified. Say, Allahumma means Allah by all your names. Most of the du'as in Quran are with Rabbana, Rabbi Ja'alni, Rabbi Zidni Ilma, Rabbi Shrahli, Alhamdulillahi, you know, uh, Alhamdulillahi, Rabbi La, Rabb is in Quran for all the du'as except for this one. Most of the du'as of the Prophet, in contrast to this, you have Allahumma, 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 Allah by all your beautiful names. Allahumma jinni min nar Allahumma ghfir lana. So all you, in the du'as of the Prophet, you have Allahumma mostly. This is the one du'a that's an exception. But what's interesting is being said, Qul, O Prophet, say. So the Prophet would use Allahumma, O Allah, ask, I ask you by all your beautiful names, because Allah says what in the Quran? They ask Allah du'as with His most beautiful names. Qul illahumma malik al-mulk, O Allah, you're the king of the kings. You give kingship to whoever you desire. And you take it away from whoever you desire. And you give honor to whoever you desire. And you dishonor whoever you desire. And real honor and dishonor is in the next life. But whatever you do, it's good. Because this is part of your plan. You're the one who turns the night into the day and you turn the day into the night. And you take out the living from the dead and the dead from the living. And you give sustenance and providence to whoever you want without any, like a blank check, with no count. That, now, very important question, okay? Um, so, the true deen is being, and now, 28 to 30, be careful who you share secrets with, right? You can't have uh, love for the people, any friendly relationships, any friendly treaty. The Prophet did this all his life. But the believers have to be careful not to uh, be in a, in a state of uh, uh, making them your awliya, where your, your loss and your benefits are shared together. You're sharing secrets with them. No, this is not allowed. And this is at the state level. Okay, not at an individual level. The believers do not take those who reject the truth as their secrets. Is you could say their their awliya is the word, but what it really means as their uh, people that they share secrets with and 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 the loss and benefits together. Mindunil mu'minin with with as in, in, in contrast to the believers they they do this with the believers in other words whoever does this 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 
um, this ayah is a stern warning to the Muslim leaders. Whoever does this, فَلَيْسَ مِنَ اللَّهِ فِي شَيْءٍ They have nothing with Allah, right? Those people who deny the truth, uh, they're, and, and especially if they have an agenda against the Muslims and against the believers, then this is really a problem. إِلَّا أَن تَتَّقُوا مِنْهُمْ تُقَى Except if you find a way to protect yourself. If you're doing this to protect you yourself. يُحَذِّرُكُمُ اللَّهُ نَفْسَ I, Allah says, I, you have the, Allah is scaring you from Himself. I'm scaring you from myself. Allah says, I am Allah and I'm scaring you. Wa ila Allahi masir. And your return back is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hul in tukfu ma fi sudurikum au tubduhu ya'lamahu Allah. If you hide what is in your hearts or you show what's in your hearts, Allah knows. Ya'lamu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard. He knows whatever is in the skies, in the heavens, and He knows what is in the earth. Wallahu ala kulli shay'in qadir. Allah has the power to do all things. That day where every soul will find in front of itself everything that it good it did right before him. Whatever evil you did, you will wish on that day that there was a far distance between you and the good, the bad, the evil deed that you did. Wa yuhadzirukum Allahu nafsa. Allah subhanahu wa taala is scaring you regarding himself. Wallahu raufum bil ibad. Indeed, Allah is very kind and merciful to his believers. Kul inkun. Now here's a new topic that's starting, and that is the ittiba of the prophet and ittaat of the prophet. Ittiba means to copy the prophet. You know, like copy and paste. You're copying the prophet, and this is the level where you reach the love of Allah subhanahu wa taala. But you have to do itaat. You have to do obedience. And more than that is, you are doing copy and paste to them. If the Prophet did something, you're trying to do exactly what the Prophet did. So Allah says, Kul in kuntum Allah. Say, O Prophet Wasallam, say to them, In kuntum Allah. If you really love Allah, fattabiyuni. Then do my ittiba'a. Follow me. You know, there was one companion of the Prophet Wasallam. He saw the Prophet Wasallam one time in his life with the Prophet's shirt button open. He kept his shirt button open all his life. Some people will find this fanatical, but this is how the companions of the Prophet were, because this is how love is expressed. Somebody likes, you know, uh, Michael Jordan, he'll wear Michael Jordan shoes. Nobody has a problem with that, right? Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهُ فَاتَّبِيُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ Allah will forgive you your sins. Sins, وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ حَلِيمٌ And Allah is ghafoor and Allah is rahim. He's forgiving and merciful. But here, قُلْ O Prophet, but tell them. You must obey Allah. If the command is given, a command is given. That is a command in the sense of do this. If they turn their backs, then you have been ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to obey Allah and His Messenger. Now, here is the new topic that starts, and this is the topic of uh, the discussion starts about it, uh, the, with the Christians. Over there, the discussion was Bani Israel. Over here, the discussion is with the Christian community. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah astafa Adam nuhaw. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Adam wa Nuh and Prophet Nuh and Ala Ibrahim and the family of Ibrahim wa Ala Imran and the family of Imran. Imran, the family of Imran is either the great uh, the great grandfather of Maryam or the grandfather of Musa alayhi So, or sorry, the father of Musa alayhi salatu or, uh, or, or, or from the progeny of Maryam, the grandfather of Maryam alayhi salatu wasalam. In Allah astafa Adam, Allah chose Adam. Now, what, is Allah, what does Allah mean by chose? So, one idea is, and it's a very strong idea, that there were many of these human-like beings, the Java man, the Nandrathal, you know, all these different human-like one of them, Allah chose them and to put the ruh into it, okay, to make it a full in human being. So if you re look at the Quran, when it talks about the man in the beginning, the word bashar is used. The creation and the early man, the word bashar is used. Then one of these bashars, one of these humans, homo sapiens was chosen and the ruh was put into him and that was that was Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. Inna Allah astafa Adam, Allah chose Adam, then after that Nuh, then after that the family of Ibrahim, and then after that the family of Ali Imran, right? Al Alameen over all mankind. So these are the these were the best human beings. They were a progeny or offsprings of one another. Wallahu Samiun Alim. Allah is all hearing and all knowing. 
Now, this is about the mother, uh, mother of Maryam alayhi salatu was salam. Maryam alayhi salam. This is about her, uh, the mo mother and her dua. And she was a very righteous woman. So Allah says, وَإِذْ قَالَ إِمْرَأَةُ إِمْرَانَ رَبِّ أَنْ إِنِّي نَزَرْتُ لَكَ مَا فِي بَطْنِ مُحَرَّرَ فَتَقَبَّلْ مِنِّي She prayed to Allah. You know, Allah, whatever is in my st my womb, okay, I I give it in your cause. Muharrara, okay. Uh, Muharrara is from hur, free, okay. Muharrara, uh, fataqabal minni, meaning she is going, she's going to be in the, she's going to be free from any duties, anything of the world. She'll be free. She will be de dedicated to your cause. But she didn't know it would be a girl yet, okay. She was expecting a boy. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمْيُونَ عَلِيمٌ Indeed, you are all hearing, all knowing. فَلَمَّا وَضَعَتْهَا When she gave birth to her, قَالَتْ She said, Maryam's mother said, رَبِّ إِنِّي وَضَعَتُهَا أُنْثَى I gave birth to a female. وَاللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا وَضَعَتْ And then Allah says, Allah knows what he has give, what she has given birth to. وَلَيْسَ ذَكَرُوكَ الْأُنْثَى The male is not like the female. Now, there are other translations of this ayah, but the general is the male is not like the female, and this is completely true. The male is not like the female. The male hormones, the female hormones are completely different. Their, autonom their, their anatomical uh, being is completely different. Their psychology is different. Their hormones are different. There are so many differences between the male and the female. Well, and, and, you know, as soon as the feminist movement started, that's exactly when science started to begin to actually find out weight. Women are kind of a little bit different. They do have different nutritional needs. They have different health needs and they have, you know, so on and so forth. This ayah can also be translated as follows. Uh, in, uh, that Allah subhanahu, subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu a'lamu bima wada'at. Allah knows what she has given birth to. And the, and the, wa laysa dhakaru kal untha. That no male is like this female. This translation can also be given. Wa inni sameitu Maryam, and I will name and Allah. Uh, I will give. I will name her Maryam. So this is the mother of Maryam. Okay. Wa inni sameitu ha Maryam. Wa inni uridu ha wa duriyata ha min al shaytan al rajim. And I seek refuge. Wa inni uridu ha wa duriyata ha. I seek uh, refuge for her and her spring offspring min al shaytan al rajim from the shaytan. I think I was calling her Maryam, but we're actually talking about the mother of Maryam, okay? فَتَقَبَّلَهَا رَبُّهَا بِقَبُولٍ حَسَنٍ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted her, meaning Maryam, with uh, her dua, her dua, the mother, Maryam's mother's dua. فَتَقَبَّلَهَا رَبُّهَا بِقَبُولٍ حَسَنٍ وَأَنْبَتَهَا نَبَاتًا حَسَنًا And then Allah nurtured her like a flower. You know, Nabatin Hasanan, like a beautiful flower. Allah nurtured her. Wakafalaha Zakaria and Zakaria alayhi salatu wasalam, he's the one who 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 nurtured her, right? In the temple. Remember this temple that they want to build? It was actually existing at that time. Whenever <coughs> Zakaria went to the chambers where she was living, Wajada in the Ha Rizqa, he would find their sustenance, maybe fruit or something. That was especially from Allah is one meaning. The other meaning is he would find risk, sustenance, meaning wisdom and knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Both meanings are correct. Qala ya Maryam anna laki hadha. He said to Maryam, Oh Maryam, where did you get these from? Qalat huwa min indillah. She said, This is from Allah. Inna Allah yarzuku man yasha'u bi ghayri hisab. Allah gives to whoever he wants without any, you know, without any hisab, without any accounting, a blank, a blank check is given by Allah to whoever he wills. That's when he saw this. There and then he prayed to Allah for what he had been really wanting to pray. Rabbi Habli Qala Rabbi Habli he said he said Rabbi Habli Milla Dunka Zuriyatan Tayyibatan Oh Allah give me grant me gift me Habli Milla Dunka from your special self Zuriyatan Tayyibatan a very Pure offspring in Nakanta Samyu Dua. Indeed, you are all you are hearing of Dua. Samyu Dua. Ya Samyu Dua. May Allah listen to our duas, inshallah. What's interesting is over here he prayed for the boy. And then when Allah said, Okay, I'm gonna give you the boy, then he said, Oh Allah, are you really gonna give me the boy? Give me a sign. Okay. So this is you know interesting in that sense. So he, as he was praying, 
right? The angels, they called on him. He was praying in the chambers. Inna Allah yubashiruka bi Yahya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you the good news of Yahya. Musaddiqan bi kalimatim min Allahi wa sayyidan wa husuran wa nabiyan min as-salihin. Nabiyan min as-salihin, remember this is going to come again in Quran. Allah is giving you Yahya. Musaddiqan bi kalimatim. Musaddiqan bi kalimatin. He is confirming the kalima. Who's the kalima here? Is Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. He's the word of Allah. Allah said be and it is. Okay. It doesn't mean that that be is part of Allah. This is the command of Allah. Musaddiqan bi kalimatin min Allah is a kalima from Allah. Was sayyidan. And he is going to be the leader. And this is very important. That John the Baptist, Yahya alayhi salatu wasalam, was the leader of his people for the whole time of his career as a Nabi of Allah until he was killed. And then when he was killed, then Isa والسلام, became the uh, the Naib or the Khalifa after after uh, Sayyidina uh, Yahya alayhi salatu wasalam. And uh, uh, then Allah says, uh, Sayyidan wa hasuran wa nabiyyan min as-salihin. And he was a person abstaining from all evil. Wa nabiyyan min as-salihin. And he was a Nabi who was righteous. Then Allah says, قَالَ رَبِّي أَنَّا يَكُونُ لِي غُلَامٍ Now over here, Yahya uh, Zakariya alayhi salatu wasalam says to Allah, أَنَّا يَكُونُ لِي غُلَامٍ How will I have a son? وَقَدْ بَلَغْتُ كِبَرْ I have already reached a very old age. وَمَرْأَةِ آقِرْ And my wife, she cannot give child. She's barren. قَالَ كَذَلِكَ اللَّهُ يَفْعَلُ مَا يَشَاءُ This is how Allah does whatever He wills. قَالَ رَبِّ جَعَلْ لِي آيَةً He said, Allah, okay, then give me a sign. Qala ayatuka alla tukallim al-nas. A sign for you is that you will not talk to mankind. Thalathatha ayyamin illa ramza. You will only be able to talk to people in hand gestures. You won't be able to talk. And that is the sign for you that when you will have that, it has many, could, one meaning is when this happens, when you cannot talk to people except in hand gestures, this is the time to approach your wife. This is one meaning. The, then there are other meanings like this. But either way, Allah gave him a sign. Okay, a sign to when what uh, when he would have to go or when he could go to his wife and have conception. Allahu alam. Allah knows best. قال آياتك أن لا تكلم الناس ثلاثة أيام إلا رمزا وذكر وذكر ربك إذا كثير وذكر ربك كثيرا وسبح بالعشي والأبكار. And remember, remember Allah much and praise Him in the more in the Arshiyyu wal abkar in the evenings and the mornings. Okay. Wa if qalat al malaikatu and just like Yahya was a miraculous birth. Okay, just uh, by you can say folk uh, al asbab out. Uh, it was above the causes of asbab, the cause and effect world, right? If qalat al malaik, the more a person believes, the more. A person believes the more he is less reliant on the world of cause and effect. But a believer uses the world of cause and effect because he knows this is the sunnah of Allah. This is what he wants us to do. But he doesn't rely on it, but he uses it. Because he knows if he doesn't follow this sunnah, he won't necessarily get what he wants. So, and it's the sunnahs of the, of, of, the, of, the, of the way of the Prophet to use this world but to not rely on it. He knows that this is an illusion. On top of this, there's a higher power controlling this world of cause and effect. إِذْ قَالَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ يَا مَرْيَمُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ اسْتَفَاكِ وَطَّحِّرَكِ وَاسْتَفَاكِ عَلَى النِّسَاءِ الْعَالَمِينَ And remember when the angel said to Maryam, يَا مَرْيَمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ اسْتَفَاكِ Allah has chosen you, Maryam, وَطَّحِّرَكِ and has purified you. وَاسْتَفَاكِ And has chosen you. عَلَى نِسَاءِ الْعَالَمِينَ Over all of the women of the world. Okay? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا مَرْيَمُ O Maryam, أُقْنُطِي لِرَبِّكِ وَاسْجُدِي وَرْكَعِي مَعَ الرَّاكِعِينَ And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا مَرْيَمْ أُقْنُطِي بِأُبِيدِيَنْ لِرَبِّكِ To your Rabb. وَاسْجُدِي And do sajda. Do sajda. Prostration. وَرْكَعِي مَعَ الرَّاكِعِينَ And you may, as a female, pray in jama'ah with and do ruku with those who do ruku and do bow down with those who bow down dhalika min anba'i al-ghayb nuhi ilayk this is amongst the 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 knowledge of the unseen nuhi ilayk that we revealed to you o prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam wa ma kunta ladayhim and you were not there at the time you you id yulqawna aqlamahum that when they were uh, you know uh, they were throwing their pens 
okay, to see who would get Maryam, okay, so, and then Zakaria obviously got it, uh, he won the lot, so to say, they were, they were, you know, Ayyuhum yakfulu Maryam, which of them will raise Maryam, wa ma kunta ladayhim is yakhtasimun, and you were not there, when they were arguing with one another about who would raise Maryam, alayhi salam. إِذْ قَالَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ And when the angel said, يَا مَرْيَمُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبَشِّرُكَ بِكَلِمَةِ Allah, Allah gives you the good news of a word. مِنْهُ From Allah. اسمه, عيسى, اسمه المسيح عيسى بن مريم And his name is مسيح عيسى بن مريم He is the Christ. He is the Messiah. He will come as the Messiah. عيسى بن مريم عيسى, the, the son of Maryam. وَجِيهًا فِي الدُّنْيَا Such honorable in this world. And in the hereafter, he will be amongst the muqarrabin, those that are very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يُكَلِّمُ النَّاسَ فِي الْمَحْدِ وَالْكَحْلَ He will talk to mankind in the cradle and kahla when he is old. Now, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam left this world when he was 33 years old. Kahla is used for somebody who is more than 40 years old. وَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ And he is amongst the righteous people. قَالَتْ رَبِّ أَنَّا يَكُونُ لِي وَلَدْ Oh, she said, رَبِّ أَنَّا يَكُونُ لِي وَلَدْ How will I have a son? وَلَمْ يَمْسَسْنِي بَشَرْ No man has ever touched me. قَالَ كَذَلِكْ And you will find this word. كَذَلِكْ 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 When it comes to the mirror. This is how it is. كَذَلِكْ اللَّهُ يَخْلُقُ مَنْ يَشَأْ مَنْ يَشَأْ This is how Allah creates whatever He wants to create. إِذَا قَضَى أَمْرًا When He makes a command, Means what? Kun fayakun. This makes it clear. It doesn't mean it's like actually something from Allah, right? Because this would be we don't know the reality of Allah. So this uh, giving that interpretation that the kalima is from Allah, therefore it is Allah. This type of thing is 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 talking about mutashabihat, which we don't have the proper inter ability to do proper interpretation. يُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ and he taught him the kitab, the book. The, here kitab in Quran generally means also it doesn't mean just the book it means the law okay the law you know kutiba alaykum as fasting has been ordained for you it's the law kutiba alaykum al-kital it's the law fighting has been ordained for you inna salata kana ala al-mu'minina kitaban mawquta prayers has been ordained for the believers at a certain time right kitab means law so here you yu'allimuhu he teaches him the book Al-Kitab, Wal-Hikmah and the Wisdom. The book and the wisdom, I, the wow here, this is wow, uh, you know, this is wow, tafsiri, okay? The wow here is to explain what do you mean by the book and wisdom? What is that? Tawrat was the law, Injil was the hikmah. The other meaning of this ayah could be, yu'allimuhu al-kitab wal-hikmah, which is the Quran, because Quran has both of these, or, ha, and, and, what tawrata wal-injil. يُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ You find this in, you know, يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ This is what the Prophet would do. So the Prophet taught kitab wal-hikmah. Kitab the Qur'an, hikmah is sunnah, as well as the hikmah in Qur'an. Yaseen wal-Qur'an al-Hakim, as I mentioned before. يُعَلِّمُهُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَالتَّورَاتَ وَالْإِنجِيلِ But the more proper translation is that يُعَلِّم Rasulan ila Bani Israel. He was a messenger to who? To Bani Israel. Like he said, I have come to find the lost sheep of Israel. He was never sent for all mankind in that in that sense. He was sent initially to only the Jewish people for them to accept him. Rasulan ila Bani Israel, inni qad ji'tukum bi ayatim min rabbikum. He said, look, I have come to you with a sign from uh, your Lord. Inni akhlaku lakum min atini kayhati tir. Uh, tayri. I I make with uh, teen mud uh, a the 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 shape of a bird. You'll find after every miracle, and then I blow onto it, and it becomes a bird by the permission of Allah. I cure the people that are blind and have abras leprosy. Uh, many people may not know what leprosy is, but here's an example of you know this type of distortion. You can say. This is leprosy, okay? So just so that you're clear. 
وَأَبْرَسَ وَأُحْيِي الْمَوْتَ I give life to the dead بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ By the permission of Allah وَأُنَبِّيُكُمْ بِمَا تَعْكُلُونَ And I have the ability to tell you the things that you ate وَمَا تَدَّخِرُونَ فِي بُيُوتِكُمْ And the things that you hide in your houses The things Okay إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَةٍ لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Indeed, in this are signs for you if you are true believers The point being made here is that this was not uh, miraculous in the sense that he's God, but this was by the permission of Allah, he was able to do all this. Confirming the things that were in Torah. As you find, Jesus said, I have not come to destroy the law or the prophets. But Jesus was actually following all this. It was St. Paul who changed everything. And Jesus was following the Sabbath and all the commandments that were given by law. And to make halal for you some of the things that were made haram because with the changing of time that was going to happen. And I came with a sign to you from your Rabb. So fear Allah and follow me. Follow me. In Allah Rabbi wa Rabbukum fa'abudu. Allah is my Rabb and your Rabb. Rabb, you know Rabb looks like Ab. Rabb and Ab. So this Ab means father. So actually this may have become confused or something with this. Somebody should research this. Because the word, this statement is mentioned regarding Isa a.s.a. a lot. So we should look at this and look at the uh, the New Testament from that perspective. In Allah Rabbi wa Rabbukum fa'abuduhu. Allah, he is my Rabb and your Rabb. So have have uh, become his slave. هذا صراط مستقيم. This is the straight path. Now, they didn't like what Isa was saying because the Pharisees and the rabbis and they would have to give up their, their powers and follow Isa والسلام, and they were siding with the Roman Empire, the ulama of that time, the rabbis. They killed, uh, the, the Romans killed Zakaria and then they killed Yahya and now they were going after Isa والسلام, and then after that they, will, they kill his, his cousin uh, known as James, the brother of Jesus in the Bible, uh, known his name in, in Hebrew was Yaqub. Okay, and so why this is happening because the ulama of that time were on the side of the Roman Empire. Essentially, this is one of the main events, and they themselves were became hedonistic and they became they, like it's okay if the Romans rule us. Whereas Isa alayhi was the zealot, so to say. And in fact, there's a book about this. Isa alayhi didn't, did, why, you know, Zakaria was in the temple. Right? The temple of Suleiman. Maryam was in the temple. And then all of a sudden, Zakaria is in the wilderness. He's, he's been kicked out of the temple by these rabbis. And Yahya, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, also not in the temple. But rather, he comes into the temple and, and then takes over the city. And he t tells the den of thieves to go away. So on and so forth. And all that, you know. So, فَلَمَّا حَسَّ عِيسَى مِنْهُمُ الْكُفْرَ When Isa alayhi salatu wasalam felt that they're going to do kufr, which is to kill him. قَالَ مَنْ أَنصَارِ إِلَى اللَّهِ He said, who is my helper in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? قَالَ الْحَوَارِيُّونَ His disciples said, نَحْنُ أَنصَارُ اللَّهِ We are the helpers of Allah. آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ We believe in Allah. وَشْحَدْ بِأَنَّا مُسْلِمُونَ They said, look, bear witness that we have surrendered to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which is, the word Muslim is also used by Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. This needs to be also researched. رَبَّنَا And they prayed. رَبَّنَا آمَنَّا بِمَا أَنزَلْتَ Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we, be, we believe fully in whatever you have said. وَتَبَعْنَا الرَّسُولِ And we followed the messenger. فَاكْتُبْنَا مَعَ الشَّاهِدِينَ So write us down amongst those people who bear witness. وَمَكَرُوا وَمَكَرَ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِنِينَ They plotted and planned and Allah had a bigger plot and plan for them. وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِنِينَ And who is better than Allah in plotting a plan? Now, uh, before I begin, uh, we remember we talked about be careful who you share secrets with, who you take as your awliya, and then follow the Prophet and obey the Prophet, if you remember, and then to Christians with love. This whole discussion that is happening about Isa is, is the discussion with the Christian people, and it's going to end, this juz is going to end with the attempts to discredit Islam. <coughs> Having said that, let's go back to the... Now, this ayah is extremely important. وَإِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى And remember when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, O Isa, إِنِّي مُتَوَفِّيكَ وَرَافِقَ إِلَيَّ I'm going to take you for myself. Mutawaffi here doesn't mean death. Uh, this is a longer uh, discussion in, in detailed tafsir. But I'm going to only mention the word. Tawaffi is used for if somebody is sleeping. 
what the uh, when the is used for sleep it means to take you while you're sleeping your soul and the here is with soul and body okay rafiqa ilayya and i will raise you up to myself wa mutahhiruka and i will purify you now it's very interesting why allah uses the word purify which uh, one day, very soon, inshallah, we'll be discussing this issue. kafaru To purify you from the people who reject the truth. kafaru And to make you, O oh, oh, Isa, we will make you and those who follow you, this is a very important part of Islamic eschatology. This is the rule of Allah. tabauka. Those that claim to follow Jesus, or those that follow Jesus, فَوْقَ kafaru. Those who rejected you, we will make those who believed in you and followed you and claimed to be with you over those who rejected you. So always the Christian world will have an upper hand over the Bani Israel, <coughs> over the Jewish world. إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Till the Day of Judgment. ثُمَّ إِلَيَّ مَرْجِئُكُمْ Then you will all come back to me. فَأَحْكُمَ بَيْنَكُمْ And I will make judgment between you. فِيمَا كُنْتُمْ فِيهِ تَخْتَلِفُونَ Regarding the issues in which you used to differ. So over here, what is the point? Is part of Islamic eschatology, the, the Christian world will always have an upper hand over the Jewish world. And the Christian world always has had an upper hand over the, Christ, the Jewish world, even till today. Because the people that are pushing Israel to break Masjid al-Aqsa and to build the temple over there, the biggest group that's pushing for that is the Christian Zionists. فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا and as for the, those people who reject the truth, uh, meaning those who rejected uh, Jesus, okay, that I will punish them a great, very severe punishment. In this world and the next world. This is yet to happen when Jesus comes. Because the sunnah of Allah is that the punishment of the people is given in front of the prophets. Nuh had to be there. Now Yunus left and then, you know, he went to the boat. He left his place of duty. So then that's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed the whale to take him in for three days. Okay? So the Prophet has to be there. for his. It has to witness the people he was sent to, the, the, uh, the removal, uh, the destruction of the people he was sent to. This is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to the scriptures of Allah. فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ him again, you see, wafa yuwafi is here, and inni uh, mutawafika. Uh, this is the same word. So this is the word that's uh, uh, Allah says. Uh, wafa also means to fulfill something, to take something, to fulfill something completely. So those people who believe and do good deeds, we will give them their rewards. Wallahu la yuhibbu thalimin, and Allah does not love love the wrongdoing people. This is what we recite to you, O Prophet Hakim, from the ayat of Allah and Dhikr al Hakim, the remembrance that has great wisdom in it. And then here again. Now what's interesting is the Jewish people, very smart, but they have a the view that the with the, the view at which they look at the world is a historical view. They look at the world from a historical chronological order, like the way it is in their books. People of Jesus, peace be upon him, they look at the world in terms of parables and examples. And this is why the parables of Jesus are very famous. And Jesus gives many parables. And this became the the Christian way of kind of like understanding this, uh, understanding the message. And this is why it's very interesting when Zakir Naik uh, talks, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bless him and protect him. When Zakir Naik talks, he, Dr. Zakir Naik talks, he gives examples and similes and because this is how the Christian world understands things. So over here, this is an example of that. In Mathal Isa, in the law, the example of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam with Allah is Kamathali Adam. It's like Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, khalaqahum min turab, he was created from dust. ثُمَّ قَالَ لَهُ And he said, to him, he said to it, meaning the dust, كُنْ بِي فَيَكُونْ And it was. الْحَكُّ مِنْ رَبِّكَ فَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْمُمْتَرِينَ The truth is from your Rabb, and don't be of those people who doubt, who are in doubt. And this I exactly mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah also. فَمَنْ جَاءَكَ فَمَنْ فَمَنْ حَاجَكَ فِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ Whoever comes and argues with you, O Prophet ﷺ, after knowledge has come, فَقُلْ فَتَعَالَوْ 
And this is regarding the Christians of Najran. They had come to the Prophet ﷺ and they had, you know, they wanted to have a dialogue with the Prophet ﷺ. After everything was made clear to them, and you remember if in Sutul Baqarah it was coming over and over again, don't hide the truth, don't hide the truth, don't hide the truth, you will find the same attitude here. Um, but what was given was, okay, fine, if you still have a problem and you think you're really sincerely on the truth, then let's do, uh, let's, let's have, فَقُلْ تَعَالَوْ Let's do the following. قُلْ تَعَالَوْ نَدْعُوا أَبْنَاءَنَا وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ You bring your sons, we bring our sons, our children, your children, نِسَاءَنَا وَنِسَاءَكُمْ your, your women and our women, وَأَنفُسَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ Ourselves and yourselves, ثُمَّ نَبْتَأْهِلْ To humbly pray to Allah. فَنَجْعَلْ لَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ Because there's only one possibility here. If they didn't believe in the Prophet, they sincerely didn't believe the Prophet, then and it was not in their books, then they know the Prophet is claim, that is claiming to be a Prophet my, is not a Prophet. Is, this is not the teachings according to their books. So then they should sincerely pray to Allah to put na'na on the false Prophet. Or on the other side, right, conversely, they know that he's the Prophet of Allah and they're not accepting him out of stubbornness. So then they were in, uh, they were invited to, okay, let's, why don't we pray? But نَجْعَلْ لَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ That Allah's curse be upon the person who is rejecting the truth amongst us. They were asked to do this and they were invited to do this, but they didn't. They didn't, uh, they didn't uh, follow suit to this, even though they came and talked to the Prophet, respected the Prophet and all that. And even the treaties were made between the Prophet and the people of Najran that are very famous even till today. I in fact have a Jummah khutbah on this issue. إِنَّ هَذَا لَهُوَ الْقَصَصُ الْحَقِّ Indeed, these are the events. They're absolutely true. true. وَمَا مِنْ إِلَاهٍ إِلَّا اللَّهِ There's no divine other than Allah. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Indeed, Allah is Al-Aziz, the one who has the might, and Al-Hakim, the one who has wisdom. فَإِنْ تَوَلَّوْا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلِيمٌ بِالْمُفْسِدِينَ And if they turn their backs, then Allah knows who are the people of Fasad, who want to cause corruption in the world, because the stubbornness and this, you know, staying, staying, uh, you know, uh, staying to your interest and your status quo and not following the truth. This is when you're arrogant. The truth has come and you're not willing to give in. Okay. <clears throat> then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ يَا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ Now a, a discussion is continuing, uh, encouraging them. Come on, come on. Okay. And uh, يَا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ Now, you could say both are being discussed here, the Christians and the Jews in this part. قُلْ يَا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ O people of the book, تَعَالَوْا إِلَىٰ كَلِمَةٍ سَوَاءَ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمْ Let's come to a common term between us and you. أَلَّا نَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا اللَّهِ That we will worship no one but Allah. وَلَا نُشْرِكَ بِهِ شَيْئًا And we'll make no shirk with Allah. We'll make no partners with Allah. وَلَا يَتَّخِذُوا بَعْدُنَا بَعْدُ أَرْبَابًا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ Nor will we make some uh, over uh, some of us amongst us uh, rub like masters. And over here, what is it referring to is that when you take the rabbis and the priests and the pastors and so on and so forth, when you make them and take their, what they say over what Allah said. Okay. فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا If they turn their backs, فَقُولُوا فَقُولُوا شَهَدُوا بِأَنَّا مُسْلِمُونَ If they turn their backs, if they don't agree to that, then say, okay, look, you know, we are surrendering to the will of Allah and that is your message to them. قُلْ يَا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ لِمَا تُحَاجُونَ فِي إِبْرَاهِيمِ O oh, people of the book, why do you argue about Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam? وَمَا أُنزِلَ التَّوْرَاتَ وَالْإِنْجِيلِ إِلَّا مِنْ بَعْدِ You know, they were saying, oh, Ibrahim is uh, a Jew, or he is Yehud, or he is a Christian, but Torah and Injil were not revealed after him. So, وَمَا أُنزِلَ التَّوْرَاتَ وَالْإِنْجِيلِ إِلَّا مِنْ بَعْدِ Except after him, أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Do you have no brains? Ha antum ha ulai. You know, this is like, why are you arguing about something that is completely false and you don't, it's like you don't even know what you're talking about. So, ha antum ha ulai, ha jajtum fima, fima lakum bihi ilm. You know, it's one thing if you argue about something you have knowledge about. Falima tu ha juna, fima laysa lakum, lakum bihi ilm. Why do you argue about something which you have no knowledge? Wallahu ya'lam wa antum la ta'alamun. The end of discussion. Allah knows and you don't know. مَا كَنَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ يَهُودِيَ وَلَا نَصَارِي Ibrahim was not Yehudi when وَلَا نَصَارِي Nasara. The word Judea or Jew didn't even come into place until many years later after uh, Ibrahim in the, after the time of Musa, after they built, after the after Israel became Judea. One of the, there was Israel and Judea, these two uh, parts of Israel. 
ولكن كان حنيفا مسلما وما كان من المشركين he was حنيف single track minded on tawheed and oneness of Allah وما كان من المشركين and he was not of those people that made partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so over here now is the beginning of the concluding remarks now just like Sutul Bakra there was a discussion about there was a discussion about Bani Israel and then the addresses became the Muslims and then from there Allah gave the rules of the fasting and Hajj and divorce and, and all that okay in the same way here now we're the last you can say 20 ayahs or so the concluding remarks are being made towards both the Christians and the Jews but specifically the Christians you can say in Surah Al Imran okay <clears throat> and uh, so now it starts with uh, a call to believe the Prophet and it ends with a call to accept Islam and that Allah will not accept any any other uh, any other deen. Islam is not religion, Islam is a deen. You know, a religion has some modes of worship, some dogma, some idea, right? And some customs. Somebody's born, you have customs. Somebody's married, you have a custom, someone dies. But Islam is a deen, a whole system, okay? A system that is a, an organic system of every aspect of human life. Okay, it includes the culture, includes the ideas, the philosophy, the all aspects of civilization within this. Deen means, you know, uh, something that is uh, under the judgment of, like Maliki Yomid Deen, Master of the Day. You also have, in Surah Al Baqarah, we also read the word Dain, debt, because someone owes somebody a judgment, right, because of the debt. So, Deen is the whole of Islam. Today we have made Islam into a mazhab, right? When Islam is dominant, it is as a Deen, as a system. Islam has its own political system, its own social system, its own economic system, it has its own system. But when Islam is not dominant, it becomes like a mazhab, right? There's something else on top, and then you only can follow some aspects of Islam, you can't follow all of Islam. You can't follow the economic aspect of Islam, you can't follow the political aspect of Islam, you cannot have the unity of the Ummah, so on and so forth, okay? Anyway, the point here is more that it starts with the call to the Prophet وسلم, and ends with the call, a strong call to Islam. In awwal al nas the most uh, closest people to Ibrahim, awwal al nasi bi Ibrahim, lalladhina taba'u, who are those who follow him, is the ones who follow him, wa hadha nabi, and this Prophet وسلم, amanu, and those who believe in him. They're the ones that are closest to Ibrahim. Over there in Surah Al-Baqarah, you also had a discussion of Ibrahim والسلام, in regards to the Jewish community. Over here now, this discussion is also happening here. وَهَذَا النَّبِيِّ الَّذِي آمَنُوا وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And those who believe. وَاللَّهُ وَلِيُّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And Allah is the protector of the believers. وَدَّ طَائِفَةُ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ A group of the people of the book. Uh, uh, what the uh, desires a group of the people of the book لو يضلونكم من, uh, يضلونكم to lead you astray وما يضلون إلا أنفسهم but they don't lead astray except themselves وما يشعرون but they don't perceive this okay يا أهل الكتاب O people of the book لما تكفرون بآيات الله and this is you can see a pretty strong uh, closing remarks as you will see يا أهل الكتاب لما تكفرون بآيات الله O people of the book why do you reject the signs of Allah. وَأَنْتُمْ تَشْحَدُونَ While you are a witness to this from your own books. يَا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ O people of the book. لِمَا تَلْبِسُونَ الْحَقَّ بِالْبَاطِلِ Why do you cover the truth with falsehood? وَتَكْتُمُ الْحَقِّ And you hide the truth. وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ While you fully know this. وَقَالَ طَائِفَةُ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ and, Okay, so now if people of the, some of the people uh, in Medina, the the Bani Israel, the, the Jewish community, what they did is they thought of an idea. And the idea was, why don't some of us accept Islam in the daytime and then, you know, we'll leave. And the point is to show the people, here are some people sincerely, you know, we heard what he had to say, but we didn't find anything special. So, you know, what's the difference? And so kind of like creating this kind of like because they saw whoever accepts Islam doesn't leave Islam. And that will become clear in some of the, some of the uh, this part of the ayah that's coming. قَالَ طَائِفُتُمْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ A group of the people of the book, they said, آمِنُوا بِالَّذِي أُنزِلَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَجْهَ النَّهَارِ Go ahead, believe. So that the, you know, simple... Muslims, they'll, they will be told, yeah, we checked it out, we kicked our tires, we tried it out. It was There's nothing special about this, right? In order to confuse them, you can say. 
Aminu billadhi unzila ala alladhina amanu wajha nahar Go ahead in the early hours of the morning, in the daytime, believe it. Waqfuru akhira. And then go ahead and disbelieve. La'allahum yarji'un. So maybe they'll return back to Islam. Okay? Maybe they'll think that, you know, yeah, all these people can't be wrong. So some people were doing this. But they were saying to their own selves, they were saying this. So, وَلَا تُؤْمِنُوا إِلَّا مَنْ تَبِعَ دِينَكُمْ Look, don't follow them. Just follow, stick to your own deen. Okay? قُلْ إِنَّ هُدَى اللَّهِ هُوَ الْهُدَى These tricks don't work. The guidance is the guidance of Allah. أَنْ يُؤْتِيَ أَحَدٌ مِثْلَ مَا أُوْتِيتُمْ أَوْ يُحَاجُوكُمْ إِنْدَ رَبِّكُمْ أَنْ يُؤْتِيَ أَحَدٌ مِثْلَ مَا أُوْتِيتُمْ that any one of them should be given the same thing that was given to you. Meaning, you have the guidance now and somebody else will have it. So, is this is this the problem that you have? Oh, you had you in the rabbikum. Or is the problem with you that, that they will be, that the Muslims will be able to argue against you on the day of judgment in front of Allah? Look, this is the fadl of Allah. He gives, fadl is something which is not deserved. He gives it to whoever he wills. And Allah is, you can say, expansive. In his knowing of everything. يَخْتَصُ بِرَحْمَتِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ He chooses for his rahmah whoever he wills. وَاللَّهُ ذُو الْفَضْلِ الْعَظِيمِ And Allah is full of bounty. وَمِنْ أَحْلِ الْكِتَابِ Now, you know, you don't want to only criticize. It's very necessary to be able to uh, then also appreciate the good people amongst them. وَمِنْ وَمِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ and amongst the people of the book in من إن إن تأمنه بقنطار يوديه إليك if you if you give them heaps of money they'll give it back to you وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ إن تأمنه بدينارًا and if you give somebody one dinar right لا يوديه إليك they won't give it back to you إلا ما دمت عليه قائما except if you stand right strongly over them this is because they say and this is obviously specifically for the Jewish people they say because you know we have we don't have to to be just you can say uh, to the ummiyin to the people that are non-Jews okay to the goyims as they call it those that are unlettered we have the book and the unlettered people we don't have we don't have there's we can do with them whatever we want. Then Allah says something very interesting. Now all these rules of the Gentiles, I'll show you. The If you look at Torah, Torah is actually kind to the Gentiles. But if you look at the Talmud, their law, this is where the, the problem is. So let me just uh, show you. Okay. Over here, this is in their Zuhar, the book, that the Jewish nation is the only nation selected by God while all remaining are com contemptible, contempt contemptible and hateful, that all property of other nation belongs to the Jewish nation, which consequently is entitled to, entitled to seize upon it without any scruples. An Orthodox Jew is not bound to observe principles of morality towards people of other tribes, he may, meaning other than Jewish, he may act contrary to morality if profitable to himself or to a Jew in general. A Jew may rob a uh, goy, goyim, meaning a Gentile. He may cheat him over a bill, which should not be perceived by him. Otherwise, the name of God would be, be dishon dishonored. It says... If a goyim killed a, a goyim or a Jew, he is responsible. But if a Jew killed a goyim, he's not responsible. So you can imagine the type of stuff in these books. When the Messiah comes, every Jew will have 2,800 slaves, meaning other nations. Okay, A Jew should and must take a false oath when the goyim asks him if our books contain anything against them. So this is in the other books, not Torah. Okay. And in fact, there is a movie out there called The Other Side of Israel, right? Which is about, uh, the, this, this side of Israel that no one talks about. That what is, what is in their books and what do they believe about us? Uh, meaning the non-Jews. Now, what does the Torah say? Torah says, righteous Gentiles have a place to come in the world to come. Okay. And, uh, 
then you also have this some some good things are also in, in the Talmud but Zohar there are other books that they give some of these Kabbalists and others give more preference to okay with justice and an abundance of kindness he does not deal harshly God does not withhold him from Gentiles who perform his commandments okay this is also in Talmud okay so the Talmud is kind of like in the middle so there's like Torah, then Talmud, Zuhar, and then there are other books which some of us, we don't even know what they are. But as you go away from Torah, it becomes worse and worse. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bala, but no, man awfa bi ahdihi wa taqa. Whoever keeps his covenant with Allah and fears Allah, fa inna Allah yuhibhu al muttaqin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the muttaqin. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst them. Inna ladhina ashtaru bi ahdi Allahi wa aymanihim thamanan qalila. Those people have sold their covenant with Allah, the promise with Allah, and their the their iman and their their promises. Thaman and Qalila for a small price. Ulaika la khalaqalahum fil akhirah. They have no portion of the hereafter. Wala yukalimuhum Allah. Allah will not talk to them. Wala yanduru ilahim yawm al qiyamah. And Allah will not even look at them on the day of judgment. Wala yuzakihim. Nor will Allah purify them. Wala hum adabun alim. And they have a very painful punishment. Inna minhum la farikan yal. There are those people who make their faces crooked in trying to, when they try to read the book, trying to make it look like it's the book of Allah, but it's not the book of Allah. So to make it look like it's part of the book, but it's not part of the book. And they say this is part, this is from Allah, meaning the book. You'll remember this subject also comes in Surah Al-Baqarah. وَيَقُولُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ And they say, uh, they utter a lie and, and they know it, that they're uttering a lie. مَا كَانَ لِبَشَرٍ أَنْ يُؤْتِيَهُ اللَّهُ كِتَابَ وَالْحُكْمَ وَالنَّبُوَةِ It is not possible that Allah gives somebody a book and He gives them the wisdom, He gives them the, 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 the hukm والنبوة and prophethood. ثُمَّ يَقُولُ لِلنَّاسِ And He says to the people, كُونُوا لِي إِبَادًا لِي be my servant to worship me min dunilla other than god walakin kunu rabbaniyin but what he really wanted is to people to become godly you know this rab, rab rabbi rab means lord rab 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 rabbaniyin godly okay bima kuntum tu'allimu al-kitab wa bima kuntum tadrusun and for what become godly by which you are because of what and by which kuntum ta'lamun al-tu'allimun al-kitab by what you learn in the book wa bima kuntum tadrusun and what you have dars on or lessons in wa la ya'murukum an tattakhidhu wal mala'ikata wal nabiyyina arbaba and and he would never command you that you take as angels or prophets or or as as gods as arbaba ya'murukum bil kufr uh, or command you to do kufr, reject the truth, id antum muslimun, while you are Muslims. A prophet <coughs> would never do that. <coughs> what Now here's a very important topic. <coughs> that is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took a covenant from all the human beings. Allah stubi rabbikum, and I, am I not your Lord? Which has been indirectly mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah in the beginning. But over here is another covenant, which was taken by only the prophets. And the, and the covenant of the prophets is being mentioned. So over the, first Allah took a covenant from all humanity. That, Am I not your Lord? And this is why it's part of our fitrah, of our nature, to believe in Allah. Because Allah took a covenant from us already before He brought us to the world in regards to Him. وَإِذْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِثَاقَ النَّبِيِّينَ And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took a covenant from all the prophets, لَمَّا آتَي, آتَي تُكُمْ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَالْحِكْمَةِ That when I give you the kitab, the book and the wisdom, ثُمَّ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا مَعَكُمْ لَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِهِ That when the messenger comes to you, meaning it could refer to any messenger or the Prophet ﷺ, but when a mess, any messenger comes, then when a one Prophet comes and then another Prophet comes, that one Prophet has to confirm the next Prophet that comes after him. Uh, جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا مَعَكُمْ لَتُؤْمِنُنَّ بِهِ وَلَتَنْصُرُنَّهُ You will definitely believe in him and you will support him. قَالَ أَقْرَرْتُمْ قَالَ أَقْرَرْتُمْ Do you testify to this? 
وَأَخَذْتُمْ عَلَى ذَلِكَ إِصْرِي Do you take this responsibility? قَالُوا أَقْرَرْنَا Yes, we do take this responsibility. We believe we're, we're going to do this. Every Prophet said this. قَالَ فَشْهَدْ وَأَنَا مَعَاكُمْ مِنَ الشَّاهِدِينَ So then now you bear witness and I'm also a witness with you. فَمَنْ تَوَلَّ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ So whoever turns away after this, you know, because every prophet gave the news and that news is in your books. And, you know, just like uh, the New Testament, Jesus clearly says there will come a the Holy Spirit. And it's in the he form, meaning a person, not like holy, some ghost Holy Spirit. Not because Holy Spirit was already there. The Holy Spirit is prophet and who will tell you the truth about me. Right. And so this part is there in, 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 in at least two of the uh, books of the New Testament, Luke and one more. And then here's now about Islam. Do you want a deen other than Allah? Right? Do you want a deen other than the deen of Allah you want? Do you desire? While everything in the heavens and the earth has surrendered to him. Willingly or unwillingly, everything is surrendered to him. And to him you will return back. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كُلْ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْنَا وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَعِيلَ وَإِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ وَالْأَسْبَاتِ And say, over there it was, قُولُوا آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِنْ سُطِ الْبَقْرَةِ قُولُوا آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْنَا وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَعِيلَ وَإِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ وَالْأَسْبَاتِ And like this, over there. And the same thing is being mentioned here. قُولُوا say, قُلْ But here is قُلْ Say, O Prophet, say. Over there was قُولُوا آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ We believe in Allah. وَمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْنَا Whatever has been sent to us. وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَعِيلَ وَإِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ And whatever was sent to Ibrahim and Ismail and Ishaq and Yaqub and Asbat and the tribes. وَمَا أُتِيَ مُوسَى وَعِيسَى and whatever was given to Musa and Isa, wa ma uti wa nabiyuna, and the prophets min rabbihim la nufarriqu bayna ahadim minhum wa nahnu lahum muslimun. We don't reject any of the prophets. This is the connection with the mithaq of the prophets. The covenant of the prophets was to confirm the next, so to believe in all of them. So this is the point that is being raised here. Wa man yabtaghi ghayr al-islami deen, and whoever wants other than Islam as a deen. And you'll notice that with Islam, the word deen comes very often. Whoever accepts, whoever accepts Islam as anything other than deen, whoever, whoever accepts, whoever accepts Islam as a mazhab, meaning not in the sense of Hanafi Shafi, but as a religion. You, you reduce Islam to a religion rather than a civilization, rather than a millah, a, a, an ummah, Right? If you reduce Islam into mere religion or something other than Islam as a deen, a whole system, right? It will not be accepted for him. And in the end, he will be of the losers. How is Allah going to guide a people who, that have rejected the truth after having iman? They knew these things, they knew these realities, and now they're rejecting it. And they are bear witness, their witnesses to the fact that this is the true messenger. And clear signs have come to them. Now, if Quran was wrong, they would have created a big propaganda about criticizing these verses of the Quran and coming with their arguments, and it would have been a whole historical uh, thing. Okay, But it didn't happen because the Quranic argument uh, was very very strong and very very big and very very true and as the people these christians and muslims and, and even the jewish community and the christian community as they accepted islam they testified to these things wallahu la yahdil qawm al-zalimin allah does not guide the wrongdoing people so in this case it'd be interesting to look at the christians and the jews that had converted to islam there were many of them okay uh ulaika jazauhum uh, for them is a reward. They have, they, for them is their reward upon them, which is the curse of Allah and the angels and all of mankind. Okay. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, In there, in the fire, they'll stay. And it will not be the the it, the punishment will be not made less for them, and they will yunzarun, and they will not be given any moment of breath. You you can say any moment of reprieve. 
except for the people that do tawbah after that wa aslahu and they make things right meaning they 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 make things right they do tawbah that they hid this knowledge if inna allah ghafur rahim allah is ghafur rahim inna alladhina kafaru in, indeed those who denied the truth ba'di imanihim after their iman thumma zadu kufra then they increased in kufr they so they inna alladhina kafaru ba'da imanihim so it's it's like they had iman but when they saw the prophet and they had the opportunity to believe in him because they knew it was the truth you know it's like they saw it but then they denied it thumma zadu kufra then all that would happen is they would increase in disbelief lan tuqbila tawbatahum their tawbah will not be accepted unless they accept the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa ulaika hum dhalun and these people they have gone astray inna alladhina kafaru wa matu wa hum kuffar falan yuqbala ahada minhum in indeed those people have denied the truth wa matu and they died now time is over wa hum kuffar and they died in a state of rejecting the truth falan yuqbala min ahadihim not it will not be accepted from them this is an example that is being given not that anybody would do this or could do this la yuqbala ahadihim mil mil ul ard the whole of the earth zahaban lawiftada bi to to ransom himself to find to to give himself out from that situation ulaika lahum adhabun alim for them is a painful punishment wa ma lahum min nasirin and these people will have no helpers at all so this is the end of the third juz by the will of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so now you will see after this now the discussion will start to ya ayyuhal ladina amanu just like happened in surah al-baqara right at right after the discussion finished with bani israil the first ya ayyuhal ladina amanu was ya ayyuhal ladina amanu la taqulu ra'ina wa qulu zunna wa sma'u and you're going to find very soon now the first ya ayyuhal ladina amanu is about to come here because now the discussion is turning away from these are the con- this is the concluding marks look if you're going to die like this and you're not going to accept the truth then that's fine okay and now the discussion will turn turn towards the muslims and continue to discuss the issues of the muslims and building the islamic society now over here i also want to mention something very important which is that you have fatiha you have a makki surah and then four madni surahs so how many five surahs so you find this pairing of makki madni surahs that i talked about in the very beginning so you and what is the point of this this is, gives you the blueprint for the new civilization the blueprint of the new civilization and in the process there is a discourse with the ahlul kitab the people of the previous umma and a new umma is being made the previous ummas are being replaced by a new umma this is one point another is what are, what what is this new umma what what does it have to do and now this sequence is being given so that you start with the blueprint of what the civilization is about and who are the the opponents and the people that may attack the civilization and make it weak and what is expected by the civilization to do so you found for example in surah al-baqara over there it said and it's going to come here in this in surah al-al imran very soon when it's talking to the believers again over there kadhalika ja'alnakum ummatan wasatan we made you a middle nation litakun kadhalika ja'alnakum ummatan wasatan litakunu shuhada ala nas so you'll be a witness upon mankind and over here in surah al-al imran uh, you will find kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat lin nas you are the best of people taken out from mankind ta'muruna bil ma'ruf wa tanhawna 'anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah because you enjoin the good forbid evil and believe in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this umma this civilization is being made and how it has to stand up and sacrifice and be ready for trials and how much how much trials this will be discussed towards the end of the surah you know but it already come has come uh, you know uh, that even if you have to lay down your life and wala nabulanakum bi shay'in min al-khawfi wal ju'i will definitely test you something of fear and in starvation and khawfi wal ju'i wa naqsa min al-amwal and loss of wealth wa thamarat and fruits and you find the same subject that will be over here in surah al-imran will come inshallah so over here also in this i want to mention so alif lam mim alif lam mim surah al-baqara and al-imran surah an-nisa which is going to come next is ya yuhannas starts with all mankind and surah al-maida so these two surahs are twins surah al-maida and surah an-nisa surah an-nisa ya yuhannas and then surah al-maida ya ayyuhal ladina amanu awfu bil aqud keep your promises okay and so the blue that the uh, the blueprint is given in surah al-baqara 
of the laws, the Hajj, the 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 Ramadan, the Jihad, the you know the uh, the, the the issue of riba, all these things. Now, but first it was the discussion with the Jewish community. Then this uh, the law Ya Yuhaladina Amanu began. Over here, the same thing will happen. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakat. Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakat.